was unable to participate since he was training for his new job this week. Also, Councilman-elect Bill Gawhan contacted Council's office late yesterday to say that he had a prior commitment and wasn't able to attend tonight's meeting. Mayor Doherty did not respond. The City of Scranton was able to secure a TAN not to exceed $17 million for budget year 2014, thanks to the tireless work of our financial advisor, Mr. Mike Judge of CaseCon, and City Council Solicitor Hughes, who drafted all the pertinent legislation. Consequently, earlier today, Mayor Doherty submitted an emergency certificate to the Office of City Council in order that this TAN could be passed during this evening's council meeting by suspension of council's rules. It is imperative that the city government act immediately to secure the TAN in order to provide for the financial needs of early 2014. Further, Council Solicitor Hughes recommended the suspension of rules and the passing of the TAN legislation tonight so that the agreement can be completed prior to the forthcoming holiday. In attendance at tonight's meeting is Mr. Michael Judge, financial advisor to the city. I requested his attendance in order to provide city council and the public with an explanation and terms of the 2014 tax revenue anticipation note. Therefore, I will call on Mr. Judge first during citizens' participation, and I'll ask him to please remain in chambers as long as possible during fourth order to respond to questions that may be raised by members of the public. Finally, Scranton City Council's regularly scheduled meetings for 2013 conclude this evening. In the event that Mayor Doherty vetoes the 2014 operating budget, a special meeting can be scheduled and advertised in the local newspaper for the sole purpose of entertaining a veto override. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Mr. Judge, thank you so much for attending this meeting, and the floor is yours. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, in your packets, you all should have a document called, called Proposed Term Sheet, uh, the letterhead from the uh, firm of IFS Securities out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I've been working with uh, IFS um, to come up with uh, proceeds for a tax anticipation note. Um, and we'll just, I'll just go down to terms and conditions um, that they have set forth. Uh, this is very similar to the bond transactions you had done over the prior two years where an investment firm came in with a bond purchase proposal with various terms and conditions on that and upon your acceptance, then you work towards a settlement. Uh, the attorneys uh, get together, um, get all the paperwork done, and you close on a certain day in the future. Um, this has an estimated closing date of January 3rd, and there's no reason we can't meet that deadline, all things being equal. And I'll just run down these terms and conditions. If you have any questions, stop me and ask. Obviously, the borrower is the city of Scranton. Uh, the placement agent is IF, IFS Securities, Inc. It's a TAN. The amount, we have not to exceed $17 million. Um, the actual amount will be somewhat under that. We have, uh, over the past two days, um, done some homework on the cash flow. Um, this transaction will be a tax-exempt transaction. Your last two TANs were taxable transactions. You did not have to do this calculation in a taxable uh, mode. Um, in a tax exempt scenario, you'll need bond counsel opinion. Uh, to get his opinion, you have to do a calculation. The calculation we d did yesterday has a tan size of approximately 13 million. But we didn't know that when we did this, so we did a not to exceed amount uh, in this uh, term sheet. You see the estimated settlement date of January 3rd. 
the final maturity being December 15th of 2014. Uh, we have a not to exceed interest rate of 4.5%. Um, again, that's not to exceed. Right now the indication is we should be around 4%. Uh, they did give themselves a little bit leeway in, in case the market goes south from this time until year end. Um, the collateral. The collateral is, a, is, is very similar to the last two TANs, um, whereby your, your complete revenue stream taxes uh, at all is uh, UCC'd and is leaned for the payment of the TAN. That is normal for TANs. Um, we anticipate the same structure as we did the last two deals. Uh, we will need a sinking fund depository and paying agent. Uh, we've had Community Bank, i.e. First, First Liberty, doing the uh, pass-throughs. That may change um, you know, when I get down to who the note buyer is, but right now they're comfortable with the way it happened before, and they've said uh, it, that should be sufficient. Uh, the lockbox revenue is a little bit different than, uh, than the last one. Uh, you lockbox all your earned income tax. Uh, these people want earned income tax and current real estate tax. Uh, that was the first lockbox you did way back when with Fidelity, was real estate, if you recall. Mm -hmm. um, and in this instance, it's a, um, to get them on board real quickly, they wanted to capture all that. Uh, from a cash flow perspective, it really shouldn't matter. It's just a, uh, a larger pot of money going to the community, and he turns around and gives you the net anyway. So I, I, if I can ex explain to Matthew, the uh, EIT was 55 uh, percent and then 70% going to pay to TAN last year, or this year, uh, and the rest going to the city. Um, this is going to be a larger pot of money, so the spread should be like 35% going to the TAN and 65% coming to the city. That's still an open question. We, that's one of the things we have to work towards closing and make sure everybody's comfortable from their side, the note buyers that they're going to be paid, and from the city side that you can fund operations and not have issues with cash flow that you did three years ago. So that's still ongoing. Uh, the lockbox distribution I just kind of referenced, uh, that would be in the second paragraph there where you see the 35-65 split. And the, uh, the third paragraph there is kind of the out that we're still working on it. Um, the, big, the big one to work on is March, since that's a big real estate tax collection and how we divvy that up going forward. Uh, the drawdown is a little bit different than amalgamated. You did it in two draws. They're going to give you all the money up front, which to me is, is better. You have all your money up front. Uh, the note buyer. This is unusual uh, in the last two bond deals that you did when they came in with a purchase proposal. They didn't tell you who was buying the note. Um, I needed that for uh, your reference that this, this is for real. Um, and that you have a significant pot of money buying this note from you, and it's Wells Fargo Capital Management uh, out of Wisconsin. Um, very sophisticated investors, and I, I've spoken to them. They're on board. Um, uh, the fees, um, these again are not to exceed 2.5%, and that is all inclusive of everybody's fee. Uh, I'll give you a comparable. Uh, the last two amalgamated deals, uh, the fee was 3%, and it did not include everybody's fees. So we're, we're, we're doing uh, much better in that perspective. The conditions um, going forward are fairly, fairly standard. You need a budget before they can close. Um, we need a detailed monthly drawdown based upon that budget when it's enacted. <coughs> Um, the 100 percent blanket intercept I just alluded to, that's, that's the uh, revenue distribution. Um, there will be a provision where they want to see a monthly positive end cash balance. Uh, they initially had $750,000 in there. I was uncomfortable with that since I don't know what the budget is yet. So we have to negotiate some uh, monthly cash balance monthly and then kind of negotiate, well, if you don't, meet that, what happens. So that, that's, that's an open issue. Um, the debt ordinance and the documents, obviously. Monthly reporting is obvious, no litigation, uh, and so on. Fairly simple 
comparable to the amalgamated RFP or it, um, it doesn't have a precondition of closing the award court bond deal. It doesn't have the condition of uh, many other conditions and in in that other one's pretty straightforward. Um, that's basically it. I mean, there, there's some work to be done, but that's the guts of it. And um, um, I'll answer any questions. Uh, I have one. Uh, if this were to be um, voted on this evening and approved, what would the timeline be for closing on this proposal? We're shooting for January 3rd. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, la the last two transactions, I believe, were closed on January 3rd. Is it possible that it could occur sooner? Everybody asked me that. Um, certainly, um, it can close sooner. I don't know what the, I haven't talked to bond council on whether you can close a 2014 TAN in 2013. I don't know. But yeah, certainly. Um, that doesn't give us a lot of time. The, the biggest item that needs to be accomplished is we have to do an offering document. This thing, the last two bond deals, most of it's done. You know, we mm -hmm. just have to update it. But that's the biggest um, weight we have to lift so far. And that just takes time. Other than that, um, hell, I could close in a week if, if, if we get it done, but um, we just have to put things together. Yeah, I, I, if you want to close this year, I'll make an effort, and if we can close legally, I, I, I'm going away on vacation on January 2nd. I'd love to close this year. <laughs> can, can you compare, and I know you did this a little bit when you went through, but could you compare the major items as far as, I know you mentioned on the fees, but could you also compare um, this year's TAN, the 2014 TAN versus the 2013, um, just for comparison's sakes, as sure. far as In fees. Fact, I have a comparison sheet oh, great. here. This is actually a comparison to the uh, amalgamated uh, RFP they submitted to you this year, which is very similar to what they did over the prior two years. The, nothing really had changed uh, in that. And I'll go down. You, you can see the left, uh, the middle column is, is the IFS Wells Capital Management versus amalgamated. Uh, the, the first big real differential is the rate. Uh, we should be around 4%, or I shouldn't say, the IFS should, well should be around 4% at a tax-exempt rate. Uh, amalgamated really didn't care if it was taxable or tax-exempt, and they came in at an estimated 395 rate, so we're a little bit higher in, in, in that instance. Uh, the terms are the same. The collateral is the same. Um, the only other difference would be the lockbox revenue. You'll see that we're doing real estate, and they're very comfortable with the EIT alone. Um, the splits, I didn't put the split in there, but the last splits were 55% through going to the TAN through April, and then I believe it jumped up to 70% to, uh, to year end, and you paid off this year's TAN in mid-October. Yes. Um, that's a little bit different. We're, we're going a smaller percentage of a bigger pot of money. At the end of the day, it should be about the same if we do our homework correctly. Uh, the drawdowns, again, we're giving you one, one pot of money up front. The fees, you can see where the fees are, uh, the last box there. Um, the next page, it kind of goes down to the conditions, which is, is a, a substantial difference, I think, uh, the big one being um, what page would it be on? On the uh, third page, middle, middle down, where it has complete long-term financing for the police and the fire was a precondition to amalgamated. We don't have that. Page three, middle down, starting complete. And a bunch of other things. You can see the terms and conditions are much longer. Uh, than ours. I tried to match them up for you. There are big differences. 
You know, it's, uh, TAN's not a real complicated uh, transaction. It's, it's only for a year long. You're, you're amortizing it monthly. Most TANs through, throughout the state don't do that. They just pay it at year end, principal <coughs> interest at the end. But to get people comfortable in this instance that you're going to be able to pay it, they require you to pay it down monthly. Uh, can I, I won't assume, I'll ask. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fees yes. would be um, part or drawn from the proceeds of the loan? That's what we're anticipating, yes. It, the, the fees, the language and payment of fees is, is payable out of the finance proceeds or other city sources. So we, we assume it's coming out of TAN proceeds. So it would not require an additional budget item? No. In, okay. No, nor, nor can it. We put it into cash flow uh, to calculate the size of the TAN. We put the fees in there. Now we're obviously trying to borrow, I shouldn't say as much as we can, but borrow what is allowed under the tax law and what is needed to fund your operations. And we're still talking about exactly what that amount is, but it looks like it's around 13 million bucks, which is a little bit under 16 that you kind of went RFP'd for. And uh, frankly, I think la this year you were committed to $14 million of the TAM, but you only drew down 12. So we're in the ballpark. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So to, to sum up um, the fees and the rate, the interest rate may be up to about a half percent more, but the fees will be a half percent less, all inclusive. Um, half a percent or more. Yeah. Or more, okay. Yeah. Since we're, we're all inclusive of, of all those, and the amalgamage is not. You add, you tack on lawyer's fees on top of theirs. Okay. So they're probably going to be in a three and a half percent range on their side. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's similar. I think the IFS Wells, at the end of the day, is a little better. Not by a lot, but it is a little better, for sure. Especially, uh, there, there's no condition to do other things not related to the TAN, mm -hmm. which makes it a hell of a lot easier. Don't type hell of a lot. <laughs> well, it makes a lot more sense, too, because it's such a short-term borrowing. Sure. And um, to place such conditions, uh, you know, really extensive conditions on a TAN, I think, is um, highly irregular. Is there anyone else who has questions? Nope. Again, the big factor is, is, again, not tying it into a, the uh, police and fire arbitration award financing, too. So, uh, like we said, there are a lot of conditions that are much better here, but yeah. I think you did a good job, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you. And I would just like to say, uh, as you know, I was in the, in the meeting with um, you, uh, our city clerk, Nancy Craig, uh, Solicitor Kelly, and Business Administrator Gina McAndrew the, uh, the other afternoon, going into the evening a little bit. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to thank you for your hard work at getting this together so quickly. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if you would please remain for, uh, if you can. Sure. Uh, so that in the event that any of our um, speakers may have questions about the TAN, you could respond to them. I just had a basketball event. My nephew doesn't want me there anyway. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Okay. Judge. Before we move to citizen participation, Mrs. Evans, could I just the announcement for the Oh, sure. I believe this may be the third annual Breakfast with Santa sponsored by Matthew's Mission uh, in honor of Matthew. I'm sorry, I didn't have the microphone on. Uh, Matthew's Mission has sponsored a Breakfast with Santa for three years to honor Matthew Newell, who passed away. Um, it will be held this Saturday, December 14th, at Scranton High School. There are two seatings, one at nine, and one at 11, the cost is $9 for children, $12 for adults. Um, if you have attended in the past, it's a great event. Um, they have a number of raffles. I think this year they have two 39-inch TVs that are being raffled off. They have sittings with Santa for the children and the adults. And uh, you know, numerous other 
entertainments. The one caveat to this is that it does require a reservation. Uh, and you can contact Kathleen Hakus at 570-961-0818. It's a great cause and a great event, and uh, I would encourage people to try and attend, uh, especially bring the children, and they'll have a great time. And that number again is 570-961-0818. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Craig? We can go into the citizens now, correct? Yes. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. I'm slow, but I'm southern. I got an excuse. Yeah, thank you for letting me speak the next 15 or 20 minutes up here. That got your attention, didn't it? <laughs> the, the unbelievable, arrogant statement by Mr. Doherty for us to sacrifice now for people 10 years down the road that shows his indifference to, to, to what's going on in this city. Thousands of us won't be here 10 years from now. These, these, these taxes and, and, and cuts and everything are, are affecting us right now. The, people just don't care about 10 years from now. You know, you can put a fourth grader at this table with a pen and a pencil, and in a couple minutes they can show you there is no way on God's green earth you can have a budget. There's, the, 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 there's just no way the populace of this city can, can keep up this tremendous, the, the amount of, of finance needed over the years. It's not there. You, 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 you could just, anybody out there could just take a pencil and paper and divide what we owe into the, what, 35, 36,000 properties that are taxable? It's, it'll never work. You know, right a couple of weeks ago, while you, while you people and the mayor were working on a, your budget's so hard. Keystone Resources in Clark Summit bought a house for $265,000. It's off forever, it's gone. They have 59 or 60 houses like that. One, one company in town. The university bought a house for a couple hundred thousand a couple weeks ago. How can you even intend to make a budget with this going on. It's got to be stopped. It just, it just, you're building budgets year after year on quicksand. It's just it's senseless. What, 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 if, unless something positive is done about all these phony non-profits. It, 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 the, this city is hurting so bad and, and all I, about once a week or so, you see in the paper on, under the uh, transactions for houses, a big piece of property like that's sucked up. You know, I'll just make this short and sweet. Lastly, I, I'm tired of hearing every time somebody talks to me, they blame all this problems on the fire in the police. I've read not once, not twice, but three times Gerald uh, fr fr from the Pell and, and, and 
Mr. Doherty could have settled this. The lawyers just kept going and going and going more than three times. Is, do I have the facts right, Jack? You lived through this. It, it, it was senseless. And every time somebody talks to me, the first thing I hear, the fire and the police, or the fire and the police. It's not their fault. It's the, it's the incompetent way this city's been run year after year after year that have caused everything that's happening now. And, and sometimes I know I get, I, I really get. Uh, Frustrated? Uh, I'm trying not to offend council. I, I just get mad at council for some of the things they do. But council it seems to be our only friend that, that the people of this city have, and I certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Jay Walsh. Um, yes. Andrew Porter. Andrew Porter, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> quick is the word. Quick is the word. Let the children have uh, their Christmas. Let them have Santa Claus. Let them have their toys. What are we doing? What are we doing as a city? It took more than a decade to bring forth what has uh, taken place. And um, there's been no apologies to the people. There's no, been, been no apologies to God. This is the arrogance of power. The most powerful in the world is the Lord thy God. These are signs of government that is out of control. But quick is the word, because we still have time and the opportunity to do it. The gentleman just got up and talked about the police department and the fire department. And people were looking as if, yeah, well, you know, you're going the wrong route. Maybe so. The police department and the fire department are essential services. And these people have taken an oath, just like you, city council and mayor, to represent the people and to do the right thing according to God. And so you have an obligation not to other people so much as you do to God. And this has to be done, and it has to be done, and it has to be done quick. Now, people have voted and they've made a statement that they want to change. But we cannot change government. We cannot change the way we do things unless we change ourselves. And so we have to have a conscience. And we have to know where we come from at this time of the year, the most holiest, the most religious time of the year. We cannot mask what is, ha what is being done to the citizens of this great city. This is God's city. We have an obligation to change this, and it can be changed. You can't do this by staying at home, because this is what you've been doing for more than 10 years, for almost going into two decades now. There has to be a change. There has to be a change. You can't just continue to do what you've done from one administration and, and then run it into a new administration. You voted for William Cartwright. And um, you would like that William Cart Cartwright has the opportunity and, and the chance to be able to represent you and serve God by representing the people the way God would want this city to be represented. We have great kids in this, in this city. They have the opportunity to raise funds, to be able to bail out what has been uh, uh, misconstrued for, for, from a past administration. When a past administration can say that this is a flourishing town, a town of progression, a, a town that, 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 that is, is, has no faults, give you that, that impression, that is an, a false impression. We would like to enjoy this uh, season, but it, it, we appear to be going into a foreclosure. We appear to be a city that's up for sale. And we, do not, we should not look to fault because the fault is there, but we should look to fix. And the only way to fix this is for people to come out, for people to come out in prayer. I don't know how much money it would take if a billion dollars would fix this city. 
What needs to be fixed and what is broken in this city is the way government is run. We have, to, we have taken an oath to do the right thing. And we have to do the right thing. And see, the problem that you'll have as politicians is that God knows what's in our heart. You see? So we have to do what's right according to God. And there is a solution. And we have to, we have to look for that solution. And that solution is through God. No one will know or predict how God will react to what it is that we do in this time of season, in his season. No weatherman will be able to predict this. We need to come together and we need to work and we need to be in commune, black, white, yellow, green. It doesn't make, what, make any difference what, what, what your nationality is. We are all God's children. And we, as the senior children of God, have the responsibility to do what's right. We have the, the most wonderful kids in the world in this city. And we have to look into our hearts and we have to figure out a way quickly, quickly, how we can make amends to God and how we can make amends without allowing our city to go into foreclosure for those who are just sitting in the wings and make a, to make a profit of this. You can have my house because my house does not belong to me. My house belongs to God. But whoever picks up that foreclosure, and I'm not just talking about property, I'm talking about taking advantage of people. We have to come together. We are good people. We are proud people. But we are people in need. And we need to be able to help each other. And the only way to do that is to come in. Those who are at home, all the churches in this city, this is God's time right now. We need to come and we need to ask God for help. We need to do the things that we need to do. And yes, you have numbers involved and so on and so forth, but no amount of numbers is going to fix this city unless we fix ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Thank, Thank you. you. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first off, my best wishes on a speedy recovery to Bill Jackowitz and Attorney Hughes. I hope to see them back here fairly soon. Uh, well, that was a bit of good news today, finally, that we received that tan. It's, uh, it's about time we finally received some good news. And I think that's just the beginning of something good that's going to happen. I think the city is going to turn the right direction. The next thing, hopefully, that will happen is that the banks see we're doing the right thing and we get that money to pay off the firefighters and the police unions. As I think it was Mr. McGough that said it a few weeks ago, once we get that paid off, I think we could get headed in the right direction. That, 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 that's a big thing weighing us down. And I think once that's done, I mean, it's, it's going to take a long time for the city to get straight, but I think we will be headed in the right direction once that happens. Uh, now onto the budget. I hope, uh, I know Mrs. Evans and Mr. Joyce, you said you're not making amendments since you won't be here next year. But I hope someone has amendments to this budget. I understand there has to be a tax hike. The bank wants to see a tax hike, or we won't get that court order, court award from any bank. So I understand that. I'm, I'm more upset with this garbage fee hike than I am with the tax hike. As I said in the past, I don't think that's legal. We pay our property taxes to have our garbage picked up. I think that tax hike, I, I mean, I think the garbage fee is illegal. To raise it to $300 <laughs> is going to cripple some people. This senior citizens cannot handle that. I have a neighbor in back of me. She's in her 80s. She puts out one bag a week. Another woman was here last week said the same thing. It, it, it's just impossible for these people. With the, with the garbage fee and the tax hike, we're talking over 100% hike. These people don't get a 100% hike in their Social Security. So how can they manage to, to pay these, these taxes and fees? It's just impossible. So uh, I'm uh, urging council to, to make some amendments, hopefully make this uh, budget real, more realistic than it is now. And I said I understand with the tax hike, but that the garbage fee is unrealistic. I would be, be in favor of a per bag. Uh, I uh, just hope there are some amendments. Uh, that's about all I have to say tonight. 
But uh, lastly, I know this is Mrs. Evans and Councilman Joyce, this is your last meeting. And uh, hopefully you're moving out to bigger and better things. I know Mrs. Evans, you'll be enjoying your family. Yes. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you. It was a, a pleasure coming here every week, speaking in front of you. Thank and, uh, you. Good luck in your future. Thank and, you very uh, much. Same thing with you, Mr. Joyce. You've done a heck of a job in your four years. Thank you. And uh, you'll be missed. I just hope the person taking your place is just as qualified as you were. So, so uh, thank you. Best of luck and happy holidays to everybody. And to you also. And, uh, see you next year. Thank, thank you. Care. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, before I get into uh, the Good issue evening. of the budget, I just once again, uh, you know, with the uh, event that we do not meet next week, um, would once again like to remind everyone that the uh, Bolas Christmas dinner will uh, once again take place. It's 19th year on Christmas Day from noon to 6 at St. Pat's Church on 1403 Jackson Street. And, uh, you know, Mr. Bowles couldn't be here tonight, but obviously he extends, uh, you know, his invitation to everyone across the city. And we hope to see everyone there. Uh, moving on uh, to the budget, I first want to thank uh, Mr. Judge and uh, for coming in this evening and addressing the public. Uh, you know, thankfully, uh, we were able to secure that TAN um, that we were certainly uh, counting on moving forward. Obviously, uh, you know, we always appreciate the work of Attorney Hughes. Um, and you know he's certainly gone above and beyond in many instances and in the things that he's been able to uh, you know assist this council in, mm -hmm. in a lot of different things uh, through the years and so that's obviously uh, one of the positives uh, that we uh, we like to see but you know as I, I stand here tonight I, I can honestly say that I'm, I'm very disappointed um, with the budget that's in front of us at this time and I understand some amendments are most likely going to take place later on in the meeting but you know, the reality is, is we understand we're in a difficult situation. And we talked an awful lot earlier this evening, a lot of speakers who've uh, addressed council before me tonight have talked about, you know, the necessity of a tax increase. And I think anyone that, you know, is knowledgeable of, of city government and understands the, the, you know, the situation we're in, a lot of us knew a tax increase was inevitable. Um, we, we planned for this to happen. But I don't think we planned for it to be, um, you know this 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 level of magnitude and I, I just what really infuriates me and just you know I, I'm really disgusted at this point is I, I a lot of this could have been avoided had this administration followed this thing they you spent all that time last summer going back and forth we had employees making minimum wage we were a laughing stock of the nation we were on national TV the city of Scranton for what was going on here and we went back and forth for months. Many didn't think that this council and the administration could come together, but you did. And you took all this time to put all these revenue enhancements in here. And we haven't realized half of it. And I think had we followed through on the recovery plan, this tax increase wouldn't be nearly the, the amount that the mayor is calling for. And it's yet again, time and time again, the, the arrogance and the fiscal mismanagement by this administration. And that's the legacy that they're leaving behind. You know, and it really upsets me. The other thing that upsets me is, you know, tonight, and I appreciate, you know, it's nice to see Mr. Judge here, but council sent an open invitation to the mayor-elect and his so-called transition team. Where are they? Mr. Joyce, you're our finance your, chair. Can I answer your question? No, you can't. Mr. Joyce, you're our oh. finance chair. Okay. You know, you've one. handled this budget. You know, you've, you've done a lot of good things. Has anyone throughout this process and the transition team, including the mayor-elect, reached out to you? No, but they have reached out to other council members from what I understand. Okay. So you as the finance chair didn't have any contact with them? No. Okay. I think that's a very troubling thing. I really do. That there's been no dialogue between the incoming administration and this council to take part in the budget process. This is going to be their baby in another, what, three weeks? And we haven't heard anything. And that upsets me. The other thing that upsets me is the lack of creativity, as I said. You know, a comment was made last week uh, by a member of council that, you know, we talk an awful lot about revenue, but we have an expenditure problem. You're damn right we have an expenditure problem. 
but common sense tells you when you have an expenditure problem, you need revenue to pay your bills. And unfortunately, you know, this council, the majority of council, Mr. Joyce, you know, Mrs. Evans, and Mr. Lascom, you gave us a lot of revenue here, but unfortunately, you know, as the, the old saying, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I mean, if, if we follow through on these things, as I said, you wouldn't be looking at a 56% tax increase. Okay, people across this city wouldn't have to see a $300 garbage bill next year. Tenants wouldn't have to see their rent jacked up another two or $300 a month because of a rental registration. But because we have an administration that has failed to cooperate and follow through on revenue enhancements, we're in this position. And I'm not, I'm not here to listen to excuses as to why certain people haven't come forward. It's not what we're here for. There's too much at stake. I'm not concerned about prior commitments and engagements. I do appreciate Mr. Wexler reaching out, Mr. Gawhan reaching out. At least they had the decency and the courtesy to respond back. I can give them credit for that. But, you know, to not follow through on a recovery plan, I just believe is just totally uh, inexcusable. And uh, I can only hope that moving forward, you know, things change. Because I, I hate to see that the hard work of this council basically fall the wayside. And that's what's happening here. Because now what's happening is you're being asked to do the dirty work and roll up your sleeves once again. And that's not right. Because certain people don't want to make the tough decisions moving forward. I say make the necessary amendments to save the residents of this city, but don't continue to be bullied and pushed around by people that don't want to do the work themselves. Because that's what's gotten us into this situation to begin with. And I only hope that we continue to take these issues seriously. We follow through on things that are implemented to only better the city. And uh, with that said, if, if we don't meet next week, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and uh, certainly going to be a Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Merry Christmas to you. David Dobson. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Dave Dobson, resident. Taxes paid. Good Fees evening. Paid. Good evening. Uh, okay. Uh, unpaid taxes and fees in the city are considerable and I would like to see council endorse um, reverse mortgages for elderly people that are unable to pay them because it's a considerable amount of money not coming in and it's not coming in year after year after year and eventually the chickens are going to come home to roost on it sometime and then it, it may be too late. Uh, now the DPW is, is I would regard it as as important as fire and police. Uh, I'd like to see in the new year an accounting of the DPW, what it costs for trash recycle costs, trucks, labor, maintenance, and so forth so that we could sort out this fee business as opposed to uh, uh, rising property taxes and uh, also I would point out that some people uh, with the higher value of a home would be disproportionately affected also uh, if, if your home is assessed at a much higher value than uh, than the guy uh, down down the road, well, then you might wind up paying five hundred dollars extra in property tax instead of the uh, three hundred dollar trash fee. And <coughs> I'd like to see a conversion to cans and enforcement of recycling. The mayor has a an add-on and and. Uh, Unfortunately, the one thing that the ad lacks is what is recyclable. There is a, a broad expansion of recycling, so if we plan to save money in the future on trash fees then, uh, uh, by recycling, then uh, certainly they need to be, uh, uh, it, it's, it's terrible the amount of recyclables I see when I walk Mr. Pooch uh, through the courts. And, it's, it's just ungodly amount of uh, recyclable material that winds up in the trash. And uh, 
Well, I'm not going to dwell on negatives, but we need an association of tax exempts for property tax loss replacement. This has been a long-standing idea of mine, and they have to go to the state and get compensation because it's a 33% tax exempts. It's getting to be impossible. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, everybody dwells on the U. Well, a few years back, Mr. Senator Santorum was over there talking about the great idea of uh, privatizing Social Security, and I saw a lot of 50-somethings that were concerned about it, and Mr. Santorum had his cheerleading section, and uh, fortunately he's no longer a senator because uh, that would have been a disaster. It would have been a, one big disaster. But the point being, as a tax exempt, you're supposed to provide both sides of the story, have a debate, not a selling, uh, a, a selling seminar uh, to, to con people into something. You should have an opposing point of view. So that's how a lot of tax exempts operate in a negative fashion towards the uh, public at large. And, uh, well, a lot has been said on the unions and so forth. A another thing that has been offensive from the tax exempts is somebody came up with, I don't know if it was the Scranton Times, I read it, but it's money down the rat hole for pilots. And uh, if that's all you think of a pilot as, and the city is a rat hole, what are you doing here? <laughs> All there is to it. Basic question. What are you doing here if it's money down the rat hole? They, they want to have some kind of say as to how the money gets spent or whatever. Well, we need too much money to spend right now. So, And uh, I'd like to issue a warning with public unions. Uh, we have the Trans-Pacific Trade Pact. Call your senators, call your congressmen, call the president, call whoever you can, and tell them to can it. More jobs lost. 33 years of job losses of working class. And uh, by the way, the unemployment compensation is probably not going to be as extended by our uh, federal Congress. It's under vote right now. The Ryan Murphy plan has no solution for this. How do you people pay the bills if there's no money coming in? It's, it's just years back, you used to get fired from one job and go right up to the next job, and you probably got a quarter raise or a 50 cent raise. Now it's forget about it. We have three qualified job applicants for every job. So I often wondered how many, how many uh, income taxes were lost just by these trade packs to cities like ours. and the federal government. And thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Jobs. Thank you. Ozzie Quinn. Ozzie Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. Ho Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you. Uh, I'm Ozzie Quinn. Uh, homeowner in the city of Scranton and also the president of the Scranton and Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association. We all know there is no holy grail for the city of Scranton, you know. We're in a hell of a fix in the city of Scranton. No one wants to have a tax increase, property tax increase, garbage collection increase. You know, the silent majority out there, the white collar, the blue collar, and the pink collar, they're scared and they're afraid of losing their homes. And they have a right to be because of the fact that we have seen in the last six months the number of homes that went up in the chopping block, either for delinquent taxes or for not able to pay their bank loan. Uh, Mrs. Evans, you know, nobody listened to you since 2003 when you kept on saying, and you coined it, the dirty debt. And as some previous speakers said in previous weeks, kicking the can down the street, and that's what the Doherty administration did. And you stood out there, and I want to thank you 
as, uh, really for being as brave as you were and trying to stop this here stupid debt that the city of Scranton has gotten because of the Doherty administration year after year after year with the idea of look for a lower interest loan, we'll get a bigger loan, we'll be able to pay the bill. And that's stupid. We all know it's stupid. Frank Joyce knows it's stupid. <laughs> right, Frank? And, you know, but yet it was allowed to go on and on and on. And here we are today, uh, December 12, 2014, and we don't know where the heck we're going. You know, it scares me because of the fact that, you know, there's a new administration coming in, and I would be totally remiss if I come up here and just said to myself, you know, I want to bang the hell out of the door of the administration or say we ain't going to have a tax increase and whatnot. But, you know, from the Taxpayers Association standpoint of view, you know, we reached out to Senate, uh, Representatives Flynn, Kavulich, and Mr. Haggerty in regards to House Bill 76. And we're reaching out to Senator Blake on House Bill, Senate Bill 76, which is, if approved, will eliminate school property taxes. It's called the Property Tax Independence Act, okay? And if approved this year, next year, within two years, school property taxes will be eliminated throughout the state. Each one of us who own a property in the city of Scranton, that is the highest majority of the three taxing bodies. I pay 56% of my taxes goes to the school tax. Just think if we eliminate that school property tax, it will give the new administration and the people of Scranton a breather to be able to, and we have to pay off this debt. We have to pay off those fire and police because Mr. Doherty didn't negotiate. You know, and it finally came. If I was uh, in the same position, I wouldn't give it up. I'd want my money. You know, if I was an individual and I was killed or in a coma, I'd want my wife to go after that money just as the fire and police are. They, are, they have. You know, that's why they bind me together to become a union. And, you know, you, know, you, just, you, just, can't, you just can't say, well, the hell with the unions, you know. They, we own the money. The court came down and says we own the money. So, and the only way we can pay that money is if we get behind the new administration and look at a positive thing as we are tonight with the tax anticipation, which you people were able to negotiate and get a pass. And if the new administration, and I'm hopeful they will, will get behind this new property tax elimination act and get rid of the school property taxes, get rid of them. People, senior citizens don't even know why they're paying such an amount. If we get rid of them, then we could possibly start to pay off the debt and pay off the unions and get back into a position where we're solvent again. And I appreciate it if the new administration and those remaining on council will meet with the state representatives when you meet with them and discuss this. Because we discussed it here at the meetings. We had them in and we reached our hands out and they accepted what we were trying to do, and they all, those three sponsors are sponsors of this bill. We had David Baldinger, the 76 Taxpayers Association across the state. We're one of them. Dave Baldinger is the coordinator, and he works very closely with the state, House, and Senate, and he's got this to a position that we're going to pass it, okay? We got to pass it. Get behind it. It's our only salvation. We got to look for tax relief to eliminate the school property tax. Lastly, and I, Mr. Uh, Rogan, uh, last month I asked about the federal audit where there was $11 million finding, and if it wasn't resolved, that would become uh, non-federal funds, which would grant taxpayers money to pay whatever it is. Could you give me a status report on that? Or, or, There's, there was no indication from Pell or from from the administration that that needed to be included in this year's budget, um, thankfully. Um, I know that OECD is still working on those issues, so I'm hopeful that in the next administration they will all be resolved. I hope so too, because we could just could never pay that another $11 million for mismanagement. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Walsh, would you like to speak now?
Tom. I see the winds of change are upon us. Going forward, I can pray and hope we can do the right thing for the future is here and we are it. Uh, all politics are local for the most part and so is corruption in Harrisburg and Washington is a little bit more sophisticated. Um, it seems like with the information last week and the 21 million dollars that the uh, uh, the union's looking for, are we $28 million in the hole starting off? Uh, and they want their money now, so do we have the locusts at the door? Um, the testimony I heard from the elderly people last week, uh, as the timid plead their pleas, um, I think the bag fee for the garbage is the appropriate way to go because there's no incentive for people to recycle. If they have to pay a bag fee, because uh, I walk the streets all the time, I take lots of walks, and on garbage night, the stuff that's going into garbage is just unbelievable. Um, is there a way to get the amount of tonnage that we have been putting over the last five or X amount of years up into the landfill, or is that proprietary information or is it uh, something that you can actually find or put your hand on? Is, is, that, is that possible? Does anybody know that answer to that question? I'm a numbers man, okay? Uh, being in marketing for 30 years, it's all about the numbers, okay? So are we going down in, in, in what we're depositing up the landfill and now we're going up in price? Doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's you know, people are looking for value. Um, we're a class 2A city, as I understand it, and the Harrisburg administration did not put a handcuff us in actually filing Chapter 9, as I understand it. Um, uh, last week, Mr. McGough said to me, uh, or said, not to me, he said uh, something about going into receivership costs more money. I tried to find that information. If you can give me an idea where I can find that information, I know there's 50 cities that have applied for uh, bankruptcy, but I can't see where the cost is actually more. So if you could help me out there. Uh, I like researching things. Matter of fact, I pretty much spend every day researching. And I find some interesting nuggets. Um, we can uh, roll up our sleeves and be the train that can or can continue on our off trackness and uh, who knows where we might land up. Uh, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And uh, I think that uh, we're at a crossroads and we have a great opportunity to uh, go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Yeah. <coughs> Andy Spray at Citizens Grant and Countyans. Does anybody have a ballpark ball park figure on this ten? In other words, how much in excess are we going to be paying over the ten? In other words, if we borrow 13 million, do we have to pay back 16 million? What is the cost to the final cost to the taxpayer? Oh, yeah, but that's a number. It doesn't give me a cost, a cost number. You must know exactly what the cost will be to the tax. I don't have an amortization sheet. If I had one, I could look at it and I would know, but it's not in front of me. But somewhere along the line, four percent is nothing. It's the cost. No. That's a variable too, right? Plus the cost of the borrowing the money too. You pay back at four percent thirteen million five hundred and eight thousand dollars. If we borrow thirteen million. If of course if it borrows more, then it keeps going up. Right. Okay, so we know exactly a ballpark figure what a tan will cost us. 
And that's the only way you can compare the final cost of the tent to the taxpayers. Given something like 4% doesn't mean a darn thing unless you know exactly what you're borrowing. And the duration and the closing costs and all that stuff that goes with it. That's why I like amortization sheets, but they don't usually give Montans. Okay, now, Mr. McGough mentioned last time the cost of the real estate tax as being one of the lowest. But that ain't the true cost of living in Scranton. We got a wage tax that's really high. We also got, what well, he said, a refuse fee that's high. We got a $52 fee that's high. And God knows what our sewer cost is going to be because that's going higher and higher and higher. This is all cost of living in Scranton. And if you would add them all together, we are the highest. Living in Scranton, you're paying the highest of living than any around this community. They're probably getting back. They might have higher taxes on some things. But if you add in all our costs, we are higher. Now the administration wants to go higher. I don't see how we're going to be able to do it. And these things should have been done long ago. I like amortization sheets. I like adding one and one and get two. Ozzie talks about this house bill. Mr. Joyce, you said you rent. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. You want to pay for Mr. Ozzie's home? Because that's what you'll be doing if this bill passes. Every renter will have to pay for people who don't rent. In other words, the haves against the have-nots is what it amounts to. Now, if they wanted to really do something for the people that were aged, they could have passed the bill long ago. As I explained it when we were explained here at that time, the only people who get anything out of it will be communities and businesses. As far as the average person, you may get it for a year or two before they said the school tax has to go up sky high because the money ain't coming in, or this or that. This is something that you have to look at. That's why Blake is against it, and I would be against it too. Why should someone else have to pay for your house? what it amounts to. It's not right. Of course, nothing in the city is quite right anyway. <laughs> I'm going to miss you, Janet. I really am. I miss the night sessions when we used to get there and go over them budgets that you keep bringing out and people keep throwing our way. But it was fun. At least you were trying. Thank you. And what was going to happen now? I have no idea. I don't know if there will be a taxpayer strike which can happen if people decide to put their tax money into escrow and support it into the treasury, the city will collapse. Let's hope it don't go that far. But people are mad, and they're getting madder. And I can understand it. They keep saying, you said this was going to happen years ago. I said, sure, I said it was going to happen years ago. It wasn't hard to figure out. You just can't do what we were doing. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe when we get out of these three-year contracts, we can finally get in and do something with our, our workers in the city. Maybe retirement age can go up to 55, like they are in private industry. I could never retire before I hit 55. Why should somebody have to retire at 23 or something like that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Tom Mglarski, Mrs. Evans, Mrs. Mr. Joyce. I haven't always agreed with you, but I know you've done the best that you can for the city, and thank you for your service. Thank you thank very you much very for your much. comments. I hope someone on City Council will amend the budget to keep the meters as they are now. It is probably the only thing that is really making us any kind of revenue. 
I hope someone will amend the budget to include them. It seems that somewhere along the way, the leaders of Scranton forgot what the city is. Scranton was always a city of hard-working people. Somewhere, we got the idea that we could bring in people from New York, <coughs> excuse me, and become a 24-hour city, a college town. Scranton was never meant to be that. We had a Chamber of Commerce that never brought anything into this city and always took from the city. I believe when they sold the old Chamber of Commerce building, they owed taxes on it. And they never paid it up. I hope the new administration will realize that it is the people in this town that need the help. And they devote their time to paving the streets, putting in sidewalks, new curbing, and helping people who can't afford to fix their house to give them some kind of a relief instead of just giving it to the developers. Good luck, City Council. You'll be needing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Marie Schumacher. Good evening. Good evening. Um, and before I use up all of my five minutes, I would like to uh, echo uh, Mr. Ungvarsky's comments and thank Mrs. Evans and Mr. Joyce for your service. And, uh, and I say we always didn't, same thing. Thank always you. Always didn't agree, but. Thank you. Marie. I think we always had. Could, our... I, could I stop you and hold your time for a little bit? Because sure. I do have answers to yes, uh, some that of your questions. Yes, that was my next question. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, okay. if you could please uh, pause the stopwatch so I could answer some questions. I, I uh, attempted to reach out to all the department heads as well as Pell uh, with, with your questions that you had. I did obtain the answers to many of them. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the answers to all of them, but let me start. Um, your first, or the first question you asked was to please provide the assumed percent of property tax owners will pay and garbage fee in 2014, as well as the rate assumed in the 2013 budget for this tax and fee. Um, Basically, the collection rate uh, that was assumed for the real estate tax was 88% in both budgets, both 2013 and 2014. Uh, for the garbage collection fee, it's 76%. Both years? Yes. Thank you. Um, Please provide a breakdown of the costs of the total garbage fee by category and the number of fee payers to whom the invoice will be sent. How much, if any, is included in this line item for the repayment of the 2013 landfill forbearance? Um, I didn't get a concrete answer for this question. Uh, basically, the response that I received back from Pell was that we could try to isolate costs further, but um, what, what I actually sent them was correct in the things that I listed as expenses of uh, refuse collection. And of course, um, those are uh, the cost of labor for refuse slash recycling workers, as well as their health care benefits, workers' compensation, pension, um, as well as uh, the cost of fuel fuel for the vehicles responsible for the collection of refuse and recyclables, as well as the cost of vehicle repair, and also uh, the tipping fee. Um, 
I don't have the exact figure on, on that number. Um, the next question that you asked, uh, what additional service will be provided in 2014 that wasn't provided in 2013 that accounts for the increase in the rental registration fees, or the rental registration fee to $50? Basically, I said to um, Pell, you know, are there any other services in the department heads? Are, are there any other services that will be provided uh, for the increase in the rental registration fee? And personally, I'm assuming that they're not. However, I know that the increase in the rental registration fee is similar to some other cities in the United States um, and in Pennsylvania. Basically, Pell stated that as long as the fee covers the cost of the inspection plus administration slash record keeping and is not a tax in disguise, then the fee amount is probably okay. The city would have to determine the true cost of providing the service. So interesting enough, if the city says, well, the inspection is what it would cost $300, um, that's the number that they could use to justify an increase. If they Even could. though maybe that maybe the city could think in the year before that an inspection was only costing a hundred dollars so um, it, it's it's very vague but, uh, the rule on it and, and I, I think the, uh, the the property owners could testify as to how long they spend at their place so that would be in what the hourly rate is so that's something that could be verified as to whether it's a tax or a fee but yes. thank, thank you yeah um, you also asked what is the intergovernmental reimbursement split between CDBG demolitions and the state's contribution to pension obligations. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, for 2013, the city received three, approximately $3 million in state aid, and that was applied to the 2013 MMO. Um, that's the amount assumed for 2014 as well. Uh, interesting enough, uh, and, I, and I did not know this uh, in regard to um, OECD, is that they can charge uh, retirement costs to, uh, they could take them out of CDBG funds. And um, actually, Pell uh, did state that they'd be surprised if the city is not doing this. Uh, but Pell doesn't monitor that fund, so they didn't know. Um, as far as pilots, you asked uh, from what entities and in what amount for each uh, will pilots be received. Uh, for the University of Scranton, as, as we know, it's 175000 Lutherwood is 6000 Harrison House is 500 and additionally, uh, the city does receive uh, some pilot contributions from the Scranton Housing Authority. Um, I asked um, if I was missing anything, and I, I really wasn't. That's all that we're getting. Um, but didn't, but didn't the, isn't the amount in the 2014 budget considerably more than that amount? Um, I Which would be um, $181,500. I think it's more than that in the budget. So where's, what makes up the difference? Uh, in, interesting enough, uh, I would assume that uh, the city is uh, somehow optimistic that they will obtain more pilots. Mm. Okay. The next question you had posed mm -hmm. was the miscellaneous revenue slash cable TV revenue includes $28 million to be borrowed in 2014 for the public safety uh, employee payback award or back pay award. Uh, it's my understanding that there will be a $100,000 penalty per month for non-payment of this back pay. When is the $28 million expected to be received and when will and 
will it suffice to cover the interest? Well, um, Pell's response to this, and, and I had my own response, and, and I asked them to provide some more input. Basically, said, they said the award borrowing should be $22 million for the award. In parentheses, award plus cost of issuing the bonds, which of course, uh, well, Mr. Judge would probably know more about that than, than <laughs> I would. Um, and the pension is for $6.1 million, unpaid, unpaid balance plus the interest penalty. Unless, of course, uh, that TAN does come in before the end of the year and that pension payment is um, made, but I know that's asking a lot. <laughs> interest is included on the pension payment. Uh, they weren't sure on the month monthly interest charges for the union. Uh, only half a year of debt payment in 2014 for the award financing. Um, they had really no idea uh, as to the union's willingness or um, a timetable for the borrowing under a new mayor. Okay. So uh, as far as the interest on that award is concerned, I hope that mayor-elect Courtright would um, try to negotiate something with the unions to hopefully um, come to an agreeable term on the interest uh, because so then th there is no interest in the 2014 budget for that then right basically yes is there a lender for the tax anticipation note and if so what will be the fee and interest charged uh, well I think, uh, I think we Mr. Judge took care yes. of that one I think um, so Will the local tax amount budgeted for 2013 be achieved? And if not, how much will the budgeted revenue be short? Um, I said, uh, f for my review, I was assuming that there should be no problems with this, and, and Pell did confirm. They said that we don't, or we don't see any um, local services tax problem. Um, and they also uh, confirmed that the budgeted amount for the earned income tax uh, in the 2014 operating budget is attainable. That was Pell's opinion. Um, the uh, next question that you had related to uh, uh, a revenue amount for the TAN of $16 million, and then on the expense side, it was $17 million. Mm -hmm. Um, that was put in there to cover the cost of fees and interest, but um, as Mr. Judge did explain, on a $13 million TAN, the cost of it would be about thirteen five. So, uh, for instance, on a $16 million, uh, $16 million TAN, I'm assuming the cost would probably be somewhere in the Oh, uh, I'd say six fifty to seven hundred thousand range, um, Mr. Judge. Am I correct in my assumption? You are. Uh, in fact, I just got a text back. You cannot close a two thousand fourteen tan in two thousand thirteen. Okay. So I guess we uh, <laughs> now know the answer is that we will be paying the interest on uh, the uh, the MMO payment. Okay. Um, Next, you asked, what is the tax collection committee? Who are the members and why do they expect to incur expenses of almost half a million dollars? Um, this is the countywide tax collection commission. They collect the earned income tax. And basically, that's what I was able to um, obtain. Hmm. No, okay, that's... Oh. Okay. Uh, I know I I know I didn't get to yeah, I didn't get all your questions, but I did get as much as I possibly could. Well, yeah, there there are certainly more unanswered than answers, but I appreciate what you did. But you know, I I feel, and two of the members aren't there, but everybody should want to know the answers to these questions before they vote on the budget, and um, and if they don't. Uh, 
if I were sitting up there, I would have to recuse myself because if I didn't know that this was an actual workable budget, I couldn't vote one way or the other on it. So I'm, I'm disappointed that the answers aren't fully available because I, I think they're all legitimate. Uh, especially nothing on that $7 million jump uh, over the unpaid bill or court awards. Is, uh, is the unpaid bills going to be the uh, deficit that we're going to have at the end of 2013? Well, we are holding back bills, uh, plus there's, of course, the MMO payment that's going to be missed, that's going to be made up for in 2014. Uh, so uh, your assumption is, is very logical and, and correct. Okay. Thank you. And, um, and you already said nothing, nothing in the, the budget either for, uh, for that, all the interest that's going out. Uh, Mr. Rogan, I have two questions for him, but I guess he wasn't interested in the interest of my questions either. Um, I could take a crack at them if they're OECD well, related. Well, yeah, I'd like to know where that the uh, delinquent loan status of all the delinquent loans is. That's been weeks. That's something that Mr. Rogan has been involved in. So. And then the other one, he has been uh, advocating going to a per bag fee for the trash and I wanted to know from him how much per bag he thought we would or calculated I would hope would have to be charged to raise the seven million dollars that's in the budget for the trash removal yeah um, to be honest with you I don't know if there's ever been a garbage study done in the city of Scranton or any other city that determines the amount of the number of bags of trash that the average household puts out every week but um, just from looking at there, there's uh, one city in in Pennsylvania I know that does a per bag fee and that's Wilkes-Barre and uh, I know that theirs is two dollars per bag okay and but I, I yeah. I don't think two dollars per bag would, would give us seven here. million dollars. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think so either. Uh, will we be collecting the trash at the twenty-four percent, the homes of the twenty-four percent that are not plan uh, will not be paying according to the the collection percentage that they're using for the budget? Well, it's it's um, I, I, I'm assuming that that will happen. I don't see the DPW being able to or even knowing who pays their trash bill and who gets behind. Um, you know, I think at least uh, NRS has done a very good job at going after those with delinquent trash bills and I hope they could continue their good work and hopefully there's some way that um, in the next administration that uh, they will be able to collect uh, refuse fees more effectively because that, that is very problematic when you think well, about it is because our three hundred dollar rate is pay. is going to pay for the quarter of the people who do not right you're you're who absolutely don't bother correct. to pay and it is in the ordinance uh, they originally drafted back I believe in 89 that that is uh, something that the DPW is allowed to do so uh, I would certainly hope that was looked at um, I, and I just want to verify if there are amendments to the budget tonight there will be a second round of questions since we have not been made privy uh, to any amendments I is would definitely uh, advocate for that I think that the public should have the chance to uh, speak about any amendments and uh, I have a page here from my colleagues uh, oh. that was provided that describes the amendments that uh, they will make tonight and I think that the public should definitely have a chance okay. to comment on them okay and and I do hope that the uh, that if there is there since there are going to be amendments that one of them would be that any person who doesn't pay their real estate tax their city real estate tax uh, and is 62 or over will be uh, provided materials on reverse mortgage and referred to a, a financial person that can help them or persons 
because I think there are a lot of people, as I said, I think this could end up being the great real estate robbery because, uh, you know, within two years they could be sold and all the equity, assuming there is at that age of life on stage, I would certainly think that a lot of people are going to be walking away with a lot of people's hard-earned equity. So uh, I do hope that's one of the – so uh, some of you I'll see next year and – some of them, but it's probably later if there are amendments. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure uh, I'll, I'll speak to you again in less than an hour. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think it's really important for this Council to send a very strong signal to the community and um, let the mayor's budget be implemented the way it sits. And when the council does this, they need to be vocal, very vocal, all five council members, not just some, but all five, and state that this city cannot pay this rate of taxation because the tax base just doesn't have it. And you know, you read in the paper today where the city unions want their money. And look, at I'm not against that, but we can't pay that either. And when we take a look at the amount of these taxes that are coming, and Mr. Rogan, I appreciate what you said, because I think it supports some of what I'm saying today when you ask that they extend the deadline to pay your taxes. But I think it's time to be very honest and very truthful and admit one thing. People can't pay this tax. They don't have the money. And to implement and borrow and, and pretend, look, at nothing personal against the council, but it's like watching a comedy show. We've taxed this community in every way you can imagine. Now, Mr. Courtright is going to take office soon. I read in the paper that he's bringing some of Mr. Doherty's people on board to steer the ship financially. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Because when you take a look at where this city is financially, and you're going to bring a failed team in, to implement another failed plan to turn a failed city around, it's ridiculous. And you know, when you take a look at the amount of people who voted, if that isn't a very strong indicator that the residents of this city have no faith in its elected government, that should be an eye-opener. You know, I was in the state capitol today listening to them and the the, the radio stations report on, this, on the state's financial condition. And to be honest with you, that's as much of a comedy show as this. I mean, we take a look at where the federal government is, the state government, cities like Scranton and the community, and I think that the people we elect have a failure to understand reality. Because we've come to the conclusion that we can enact things and all of a sudden a miracle will happen and the revenue will appear. Well, we've done that for a very long time. And I just think we need to take a new stance. We need the residents of this city to put all their tax money in escrow and force this city to do what needs to be done. And not only the city, but the state government to recognize that the residents of this city have no more money to give and let it be the beginning of a tax revolt across this commonwealth and maybe across this nation. Because we elect people that have no sense of reality, who spend a lot of money getting elected, and all they do is deceive the people that are voting for them. And the few people come up because they always vote, but most people have stayed home. And when you watch the elective process that just took place in this city, we have elected people that have determined there's no need for a tax increase and they have a plan. And my point is that we need to vote no, let the mayor's budget take place, and let all these things take place. And then let Mr. Courtright and the new council members come in and do the things they told this tax base that they could do. That's the problem here. We have to deal with reality and not make believe. And the other thing I think is, look, I don't know what's going to happen to this council after the election, take, after the new council takes place. I don't know if the solicitor is staying. I don't know if the city clerk is staying. I don't know how many of the people in the mayor's 
although Mr. Courtright has made a lot of uh, suggestions to the Scranton Times on what he is going to do, but I'd like to say something that in this council chamber, whether I agree with what's going on here for a long time, I think that Mrs. Craig has been a major asset to this council. And I've watched a lot, an awful lot of councils, and a lot of clerks, and a lot of solicitors. And I'd just like to say that in my own opinion, and like I said, I don't, I don't pick sides here. I just try to be factual. At every instance when this council had a question about what had occurred in the past in this city, Mrs. Craig had a pretty good handle on what had occurred. And I just think that whether I agree with what the unions have done or whether I agree with where this city has gone, that's the kind of people that we need to put in place who know the history of this city, know what's occurred, know where the information is, how to retrieve it, how to present it to council. And, you know, I, I know that a couple of times other councils have taken their positions and have kept the clerk and, and, and a couple of times they've kept the attorney. And I just think that in some instances, we need to bring and keep capable people. But if we're going to allow, if Mr. Courtright is going to build and rebuild this city with a failed team that the mayor had, then I disagree with that. You can't mix apples with oranges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Babe Moranis, Granton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank you, Mrs. Evans, and you, Mr. Joyce, for all the excellent work that you've done over the years. And God bless you for all you put up with, and you didn't deserve any of the crap that you got. But you thank took it with you. grace. You really did. You took it with grace. And I'd like to thank Nancy for all the hard work she's done. Uh, she's been great as well. Uh, thank you. There, there aren't words to describe how good you've been. Mr. Rogan, Mrs. Ms. Schumacher didn't get a chance to get your response because you weren't here. What's the status on the OECD loans? Regarding the list that was requested from Ms. Abley? Marie? Yes. Delinquent. We still haven't received that from OECD. And how long have we been asking for this and you, every week you come in and say the same thing? Years. Well, how come you don't get on top of this and ask her, keep asking her? I mean, how, how is it that you can't get the response from her? City Council has had this problem with many department heads. It's, it's not just OECD. And well, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about OECD. You're the head of it. Well, How come you can't get the response from her? Ultimately, she answers to the mayor, not to City Council. And that shouldn't <laughs> so be the case. You're trying to say she doesn't answer to you, the head of OECD? No, she doesn't. She doesn't have to. No, just... I also understand that she's supposed to be working at that, in that department under Billy Courtright. Is that possible? I mean, I, if that's the case, how dumb is he? Well, then again, he's also keeping the same people. I mean, here's a woman that can't keep track of $11 million. And she's going to be rewarded by keeping her job? I wrote letters, and I didn't get a response from any of you, uh, Mr. Rogan, Mr. McGough, Mr. Laskin, uh, regarding the questions that Marie asked. Did, Frank, I really appreciate all the time. And you didn't even have to, because you're not even going to be here next year. You took the time to call all these people and get the answers, which is very much appreciated. And like Mr. Sch Mr. Schumacher said, how could you pass a budget if you don't know the answers to these questions regarding the budget? Mr. Rogan, did you call anybody to get any answers to any of your questions? I have no, no questions regarding the budget were directed to me yes, from Mr. Schumacher's list. They, they were only provided to Mr. Joyce and Mrs. Evans, I believe. No, last week when she was here, she wanted all of you, and I even said, and I wrote you a letter which I got no response. And I said, Ms. Schumacher, ask all these questions, and I hope that you go to the department heads and get the answer, not just Mr. Joyce, you and Mr. McGough. I can't believe that you could sit there and say that no questions were directed. I, I didn't receive a letter from Ms. Schumacher. Oh, I don't think you had to. She was here last week and asked every question. You could have asked uh, your clerk to get the copy of the questions. And I stood here last week and said you should get the answers and make sure that you do. Did you not hear me? I, I'm not going to argue with you. Well. <laughs> I mean, that's your job. It's like I told you in your letter that I wrote you that, like, make it, I, I didn't even write it. Uh, you also said last week that you're going to make amendments, but you're not going to raise any salaries to the current level. Does that mean that, since it's the current level, are you going to make an amendment to raise the salary back? Mr. Doherty, Mayor Doherty wants to decrease the fire chief. Are you going to put an amendment to raise that? Um, would you like me to address the amendments? The I'd like you to address the question, that, that specific question. Are you going to make an amendment? 
to raise the fire chief's salary back up? The amendment package contains um, sustained funding for the fire chief's salary. That means to put it back to what it was? The same salary as it was, yes. Yeah, okay. Where are you going to get that money from? Um, DPW overtime. Oh. You could, guarantee, you could guarantee that there's not going to be overtime. No, there's, there's still funding for DPW overtime. So, but if there's, here's my point. If you could take money out of the budget to pay for something else, why don't you just take that money out of the budget and leave it out? Don't put it towards anything else. If we're so far in the hole, why would you take money out of something? Why don't you just take it out and subtract it and bring it, make it less for us taxpayers instead of playing around with it to take care of Billy Courtright? Bill Courtright, it's the only thing he asked council that he wanted them to do is put the fire chief's salary back up. Isn't it amazing how he wants to take care of the unions? But that's the one thing he wanted council to do. Nothing else you heard from him because he's nowhere to be found because he's afraid to answer questions from the council because he's going to appear less than knowledgeable. Let's put it that way. Uh, I find it amazing that you took care of that, though. Another thing. Why not you? Now, this isn't too hard to figure out. You could get a, a driver's license or a birth certificate. Why can't you have senior citizens over 65 pay maybe the same amount that it is now or even less for garbage? Why can't senior citizens, 65 and older, or maybe 62 and older, pay a low amount for their garbage? That's not right. I have one bag of garbage at that today for tomorrow's pickup. My neighbor has six cans. Okay? So how come senior citizens can't pay? That shouldn't be hard to figure out. Wouldn't that be fair? I mean, you were saying, somebody was saying earlier, at Mr. Joyce, maybe that you couldn't keep track of who paid and who, who didn't pay. But that, that's, that's why you have people that do that. But it should be easy to find out who the senior citizens and they should be allowed to pay less. This isn't fair at all. And like I said, we'll be able, and again, I want to thank you and Mrs. Evans and Nancy for a great job, and Mr. Hughes as well. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <coughs> Hi, Dennis, the last week. Chrissy. <laughs> Hi, Dennis. Hi, Chris. Well, tomorrow's big game for horse tomorrow, Frank, though. We're going to win tomorrow, Frank, tomorrow. It's going to be a good game tomorrow. <laughs> All first week tomorrow, thank you. All right. That's Chris, you need your hat. Put, your, You're getting put on your double horns. We're all behind Old Forge. Oh, <laughs> That's right. Even though it's not West Side. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Mrs. Craig? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yes, we did have quite a number of Boy Scouts present for tonight's meeting. I'm assuming that they were doing so in fulfillment of um, earning a badge. So we thank them for their attendance. What was the troop number? 16? Troop, troop 16. Troop number 16 of Scranton. And this young lady here was going to make a speech. Do you still want to speak? <laughs> She's a little shy. Thank you. 5A, motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, to answer a question that was posed earlier, um, in speaking with Mr. Courtright um, earlier today, he did indicate that he and the finance team were going to be out of town, that they were meeting with um, some potential investors, some, poten some potential um, people that are banking interests, investment interests that um, may be interested in looking at um, borrowing for the uh, arbitration award and that um, they felt it important to go to that meeting uh, to deal with that situation. Um, secondly, uh, I'm going to say most of the comments that I have for uh, the uh, for the business part of the meeting, uh, I, I do want to say that um, amendments are being proposed or will be proposed. These are amendments that have had input from a number of sources. 
Um, and we have been in contact, or we have spoken with with Pell, with DCED, with the Court Right Finance team. I know all all of us have probably spoken with other um, other people from the investment communities, uh, from the banking community, uh, to get input on the budget and. I believe that with the amendments that will be proposed, we have <clears throat> that if adopted would give us a budget that is sustainable for 2014 and can help us move forward and solve some of the problems that we do have. Uh, it may be premature to say, but the, the amendments to the budget um, do not provide for a tax increase beyond what is in the initial proposal. And last week when I spoke, I, I did say that I, I felt that there may be a need to do that um, as we went through the budget and talked with different people it became apparent that perhaps we could keep it at the level that was proposed by Mayor Doherty and um, hopefully that will solve our help solve some of the revenue problems that we have and I will speak more about that as we get to the amendments but hopefully um, we, we can arrive at an amicable, a sustainable budget this evening, and um, hopefully it allows the future administration to to work with it and to move forward. And thank you. That was all. Um, Mr. McGough, when will you present the amendments for the public? <clears throat> it was my belief from uh, just a couple of weeks ago that we need to introduce the legislation that's before us before we can vote to amend, amend it. right but i know that in previous years I think, you, uh, I think mr joyce always began the meeting with his amendments so that the public was aware of them and would have the opportunity to would, if if it's agreeable to everyone we obviously we could do that now if that'd be fine sure do you want to Present them, or since I, or I'm here. Yeah, you have them in front of you. So. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly whose amendments are belong to who. So, uh, and, and that's the the other thing. Is if I'm going to do this now, uh, these are not amendments that were uh, provided by, I would say, any one person. Uh, this has been an effort um, from a variety of people. As I said, uh, I know Mr. Mr. Rogan has worked quite a bit on them. Um, I, I've had some input. Uh, I know Mr. Lascom has had some input uh, with Mr. Rogan, and and again, we have had input from uh, the Court Right Finance Team and others. And to identify a specific like whose this was. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know that that's a possibility. It, there are things that we discussed at length in many cases, some things that we um, took from others, some that you know, we may have disagreed with and were not put into the amendment. So uh, I would like to say that this is truly a, an amalgamation of ideas uh, and hopefully ones that can be supported. Um, the amendments as presented. Uh, number one, on page 33, Office of the Mayor, increased standard salary from $91 million to $96 million and make the same change to total employee compensation. You mean 91000 right? Nine, I'm sorry, yeah, 91000 uh, Okay, I got the decimal point instead of the... 91,000 to 96,085. On page three, 
increased confidential sa secretary salary from $31,085 to $36,085 and changed the department of mayor total from $91,085 to $96,085. On page 42, decreased standard salary for the office of city council city clerk from $219,290.96 to $214,290.96. On the same page, decrease the total for the Department of City Council, City Clerk, from $300,942.29 to $295,942.29. On page 43, in the office of City Council City Clerk, decreased the salary of the Legislative Legal Advisor from 45000 to 40000 and decreased the total on page 43 to $214,290.96. Okay, that's all kind of a, a package. First Amendment, uh, or First uh, so that okay. that's all voted on together, rather than well, I, I think we would probably have to do them as individual items. Like I would is assume one is one, two, three, or one A, B, C. That was one A, B, C. I'm sorry. Yeah. If if and I don't want to okay prolong this, but if one A were to fail, one B would be unnecessary. So. I, but, but I, I believe that each one of these is going to have to be an individual. Whatever you prefer. vote. Yeah. Well, I, it, it, like you said, like Pat said, or Mr. Rogan said, I'm sorry, uh, that um, you know, if, if one is not passed, then the others become moot. Uh, so I think we just have to do them in order and move. Uh, number two, on page 39 in the Department of Public Safety Bureau of Fire, Increase the standard salary from nine million two hundred and forty thousand five hundred and seventy eight dollars and fifty cents to nine to nine million two hundred and fifty seven thousand eight hundred and six dollars and sixty one cents and change the in total the total employee compensation from twenty mil twenty one million six hundred and five thousand one hundred and thirty eight dollars and ninety nine cents to $21,622,367.10. Um, on the same page, make the same changes to the Bureau of Fire total and change the public safety total an appropriate amount. On page 40, and this is A, on page 40, Department of Public Safety, Bureau of Fire, increase the salary of the chief from $50,000 to $67,228.11 and increase the Bureau of Fire total from $9,240,578.50 to $9,257,806.61. On page, and this would be B, on page 82, Department of Public Works, Bureau of Referees, Refuse, Decrease overtime salary from $100,000 to $82,000, $771.89. And that would be, um, those items would be obviously to increase the salary of the, the fire chief. Anything? Move. <laughs> Number three, on page 83 in the Department of Public Works Bureau of Refu Refuse, reduce the number of collectors from 27 to 26, and the collector salaries from $1,106,065.06 to $1,076,065.06, and add a DPW Refuse Supervisor for a salary of $30,000. Number four, on page 62, in the Office of Economic and Community Development, eliminate the position of support service specialist part-time and decrease the funding of that position 
from $23,824 to zero and decrease the Bureau of Administration total at a, an appropriate amount. Also on page 62, this would be A, in the Office of Economic and Community Development, increase the funding for neighborhood police officers from $184,417.58 to $207,241.58. I had one question about yes. this one, if you don't mind me asking. No. Um, I, I know uh, many, many of the amendments so far have been uh, adjustments in, in pay, whether it be an increase or a decrease. Um, but one thing I did have a question on, um, the increase in funding for neighborhood police officers, will this provide for uh, a part-time officer, for instance, or, or is it just going to be used for extra funding in the future if it's it, it, not used up? Or? It's going to be used um, for overtime on neighborhood police patrols. Okay. Um, instead of using the overtime from the general budget, um, it would be neighborhood police patrols, OECD funded overtime. Okay. That's all. Number five. Those, I'm those sorry, officers, Mrs. Officers, though, have to stay in within, yes, low within a lot of moderate incomes, yeah. Correct. Because they're supposed to be paid by CDBG funds. Correct. On page 50, this would be number five. On page 50, in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, increase the salary of the business administrator from $53,550 to $85,000. A, also in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, increase the salary of the finance manager from $37,400 to $50,000. B, also in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, add the position staff assistant at a salary of $35,000. On page 49, in Department of Business Administration, Business Administration increased the standard salary from $238,904.21 to $317,954.21. On page 49, in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Admin Administration changed the total for Business Administration from eight million one hundred and sixty three thousand nine hundred and twenty one dollars and sixty two cents to eight million two hundred and forty two thousand nine hundred and seventy one dollars and sixty two cents and I would just like to comment on those those are being funded through DCED um, in the form of a grant all of the changes on item number five anyone else Number six, on page 31, decrease unpaid bills, court awards from $29,098,756.45 to $29,019,706.45. Yeah, I, I have a question on that one, if you don't mind. Um, was there uh, a specific award that won't have to be paid out or was something calculated differently or I believe changed or? And I, I believe we discussed this briefly this morning I believe that was regarding um, because the city has been holding some bills um, mm -hmm. they believe that the the penalty to the MMO will be decreased um, because some okay. payment will be made because some payment will be made okay and Final one on page uh, number seven on page 24 under rents and concessions, insert an account for cell phone tower leases for $18,000. The total for rents and concessions shall remain at $25,000. And on that one, instead of increasing the totals, um, my initial idea was to put that 18,000 into contingency because it's not something that's guaranteed. Um, I did want to put it in the budget and the company that I've been working with also would have liked, also wanted to see that in the budget. Um, so by not increasing the revenue or, or using that money anywhere, if it doesn't, if it isn't realized, 
um, there would be no harm on a, on an additional line item in the budget and if it if it comes in then we will either be over budget on that item or it can make up for um, another deficiency in rents and concessions um, if we could jump back to item uh, three you're reducing the number of trash collectors from 27 to 26 is that due to a retirement or just it was a the mayor in his budget created two new positions in DPW refuse um, both of them are unfilled so this isn't it, so you're just cutting one we're cutting one of the two um, new positions the mayor included And the refuse supervisor, that's a new position? That's funded by removing the funding for the collector. And that's also why we believe that the DPW overtime can be reduced by having a supervisor um, to monitor the refuse collections. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McGough. And Councilman Rogan, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, should, um, actually a question before that. Should I continue with my normal fifth order um, or should we allow the public to comment on? Well, I think we'll go through okay. our uh, fifth order and then I, before we vote on uh, the amendments to the budget, we can ask for citizens participation okay. once again great i will be very brief on um, most of my comments i will make um, in the voting portion of the meeting just one thing i wanted to mention and i wanted to read um, this is a letter that um, i received from commissioner patrick o'malley um, it says dear pat as a lackawanna county commissioner scranton resident and taxpayer i am very happy that we're able to extend a discount period for the city of scranton Scranton is in the heart of Lackawanna County and it is my belief that this extension will strive to help reduce the financial hardships being placed on taxpayers. It will assist our city on the road to recovery. Should you need my assistance, please contact my office. And I would like to thank Commissioner O'Malley and I also phoned commissioners, um, the, the commissioner's office to leave a message for all three of them last week and Commissioner O'Brien um, returned the call and saying that he was, he was glad to um, to help out the city this year with with the extension of the discount period um, that's all for now I'll address some um, our two big agenda items um, when it's time for a vote thank you and councilman Loscom, do you have any comments or motions yes thank you uh, I didn't realize coming in this evening it was our last meeting of the year um, so I really didn't have a speech ready but I do want to well we'll have we'll meet again in January yeah oh, okay so I'll be able to uh, reorganization meeting and maybe mr. McGough can give us the the time of those meetings I believe in the past that if I'm not mistaken the sign I die was at 10 10 o'clock I honestly I 11 don't uh, Jamie is <laughs> I thank you um, 11 o'clock and then um, then the, sub, the, the installation or whatever swearing in would be an hour later or half an hour whatever at the end of that that meeting okay thank you thank you is, is that uh, you know we probably should is that a, an acceptable time uh, yes for people or you know do we want it at 10 or do you know I, do we? I would just hope that our the council swearing in ceremony is complete prior to the mayor swearing in ceremony, um, which I believe will be at City Hall this year, um, not only for logistical purposes, but so council members can attend um, the mayor swearing in as well. But And what time is that? I believe that's, that's at noon. noon. Well, um, could we have the sign a die at 10? Mm -hmm. Would that, that be acceptable? With me. Would that? Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. Alaska, thank you have another chance. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to thank you for all you've done so I will have a little more to elaborate on that uh, at that meeting thank you um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll just uh, briefly address the budget at this point because uh, I don't know when we're voting how we're gonna go about that but um, you know we had a few speakers here tonight that, that had some valid points uh, 
Mr. Miller, he summed up the opportunity of missed revenue through our revenue sources that we've developed over the past few years, which could have put us in a, in a much better position at this point. Um, Mr. Elman, he hit a nerve too that, that's close to me in that uh, whenever something like this comes up and, it, and it's showing again in the news media, particularly the printed media, that the blame falls back on the police and fire departments for this. This was a Supreme Court award. And we forget that we negotiated with the police and firefighters after that award and were able to reduce it by $15 million. That goes forgotten. But all we want to do is look at the hard, the hard end of it. But the realistic part of it is that there could have been, there were agreements made many times through the past several years that would have been far less than what we're going to be paying out now. But the blame continues to go that way because it's easy. That's the easiest way to do it. But I think there's enough smart people here, as Mr. Elman mentioned tonight, that realize where the blame goes to. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I mean, we're, I, I've been pretty much anguished over the past several weeks trying to work on a budget. And I've had a lot of situations in the past few weeks that have kept me away from a lot of this. Um, I haven't been able to get into it as much as, as my colleagues. And I do appreciate the time that they've put into it. And, um, the meetings, I, I, there was a couple meetings I was invited to that I was unable to attend, but I did meet a few. I, I met, I have met Mayor-elect Courtright. I have also met uh, Mayor Doherty. Uh, a lot of our conversations with, with my fellow colleagues have been through telephone conversations, keeping me up to date, asking me my opinions. And, and the tough thing is, you know, at the end of the day, we have to come up with something that's going to work for everybody. And it may not be palatable for everybody. And it may not be palatable in certain areas for each of us individually. Uh, you know, this, this council, as it was stated before, I think it was Mr. Quinn uh, stated how uh, Mrs. Evans has stated over the years where we're, he where we're headed with this runaway spending and, and, and stuff. And again, I know that we've all tried hard over the past few years to limit any increases in taxes and, uh, and so forth. But the fact is we're at the edge of the cliff right now, uh, looking over the cliff. And I personally don't see any other alternative um, at this point other than a tax increase to get us back in in uh, position. I know it hurts a lot of people and, and, and I would hope everybody can make it through this. We have to make it through it together. We missed the opportunity on a commuter tax. Uh, again, there's a lot of missed opportunities. We missed opportunities on pursuing pilots. So all this goes into effect, not for lack of our trying, but we have to pass a budget that's going to work. And the biggest obstacle we have are the court awards at this point. And the obstacle placed in our way with those court awards and uh, as we saw with our TAN is that the banks won't even speak to us unless we could show that that borrowing is covered. What are we going to do? It's not an easy solution. I know people get scared when they hear 56% or whatever uh, on their property taxes. It is a scary number. The fact is that 56% is a portion of your tax bill. And, I, and I've explained this before, you know, for anyone that's interested, 
it, just say your, your taxes are $1,000 a year, your combined taxes, that doesn't mean you're going to pay another $600. Probably 21% of that is your city tax. The smallest portion right now of your tax bill of the three taxing bodies is your city tax. That's the portion that, that would be increased under this budget. Not the thousand dollars, but roughly 21 percent. It, it, it varies 20 to 25 percent on, on most properties. But um, that's what we're looking at. Yep, we're looking at several hundred dollars a year on that. But you know, it's still cheaper than your cable bills. It's still cheaper than cigarettes. Your cable bills are $100 a month. There's, there's not a lot of people paying $100 a month in city taxes on their property. City portion. That's correct. You could go on a Lackawanna County site and you'll see. There's people paying three, $400 a year. We have no other, no other alternative at this point. Nobody came with a magic wand and said, we're going to give you $5 million, $20 million. And if you don't believe how anguished I've been, and, and I know my colleagues, we'd love to be able to reduce your taxes. Hopefully if we get through this year and get this, this resolved, we'll be able to, with, with, the, with the new administration that I had specifically personally asked to go after the revenue sources that we have uh, put together, to go after the pilots to go after the back taxes and garbage fees, all of this that have been left on the table for these past few years. If we get aggressive with that stuff, it's going to be a benefit to all of us. But uh, to tell you I'm not sick to my stomach, I'd be lying. My family has seen me, and I'm sure the rest of my colleagues. To give a 5% tax increase is sickening, but to, to have to go where we have to go in order to meet our obligations, we'll get the blame, but we didn't create it. And we're making, paving the way for whoever comes in next. These decisions aren't easy, they're hard. But I want to see this city succeed. and. Uh, you know, unfortunately, other avenues weren't pursued. We have to keep, we have to keep going. We have to provide the services that you deserve. Uh, we can't even cut any of the departments or services anymore. But my take is, you know, I, I, not that I want to, but uh, at this point in time, it's our only option. I've listened to a lot of angles, spoke, like I said, we've spoke back and forth, and uh, I've seen the numbers, and, and I just saw how hard it was to finally get a tan. I mean, we were, the company that actually bid on the t original tan backed out. So we were fortunate enough that uh, Mr. Judge was able to get a company like that. But one of the big factors with that is, is, is the company see that we're starting, you know, to, we're, we're, we're probably under a new administration and, and, and it may look a little bit better to them that uh, there, there will be, they're hoping there will be more cooperation. And I'm hoping too. I'm going to keep the mayor's feet to the fire no matter who's in there. And, and I did personally request that he do everything to continue to go after the revenue sources that were provided by this body here over the past few years that were neglected. But um, you know, at this point, the only option I have is, is to vote in favor of the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Oh, first, oh, yes. uh, I'm sorry. in spite of this, and I sound like a Scrooge uh, by what I just had to say, and I apologize, but I have to do what I believe is in the best interest of the taxpayers, even though they don't all believe that. But uh, I do want to wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday season. Thank you. Thank you.
And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, I do. First of all, um, since this may be um, the final meeting before the Sinai Die meeting, I just wanted to thank all of the people that have come here and voiced their opinions throughout the years, uh, whether um, they've agreed with me or disagreed with me. I've always worked hard. I've always tried to do my best. And I've always tried to do the people's business. About the budget, you know, you sit there and you look at what the budget is and well, I admit there were definitely some missed opportunities. There were definitely revenue streams that we could have gone after or the city could have gone after, but they didn't or they chose not to or they didn't want to head in that avenue. And that's their position. And that's not something council could have controlled. Now, I want to give credit to my colleagues, Mr. Laska, Mr. Rogan, and Mr. McGough for putting amendments together. I'm sure that they've, and they, they've said that they've uh, spoke to different members of DCD, PAL, uh, Mr. Courtright's finance team, and that's admirable. Uh, you know, that's, that's putting in due diligence. But, you know, when I look over um, most of the amendments, a lot of them are raises. And, When I first became a member of council, we came in here and we lowered the salaries of a lot of Mayor Doherty's employees. Some people thought, oh, they're just doing that to be vindictive. I wasn't doing it to be vindictive. I was doing it to save the people money. And to go back and say, well, you know what? There's a new mayor, a new administration, and that some of these people deserve to make more than what Mayor Doherty's people in those same positions made, I think is wrong. I think we can't do it. Now, there's some amendments that I do agree with. And I'll discuss those later. But that's where I stand on the budget. And if these, and if the majority of these amendments pass, first, the taxpayers in the city of Scranton can't afford the budget as it is, though it may be the last option that would be afford or that would be viable to some of the banking communities. So I'll be honest with you. There should have been more done to get that tax increase lower or to eliminate part of that garbage fee increase. But I can't sit there and justify raising taxes 56% and raising the garbage fee 69% and raising meter rates 25 cents per hour and jacking up rental registration fees when we could possibly be giving out raises to the next administration's cabinet or department heads. I did speak to a number of people. I, I spoke to Pell. I, I uh, communicated with them. I communicated with some department heads. I communicated with the mayor as well. I also did place a phone call into Mr. Court right after the election to congratulate him and to have him contact me about the budget. And I will say that Mr. Courtright never contacted me, nor did anyone from his finance team except for coming to council. Now, I'm just telling the honest truth. 
I would have expected a little bit more courtesy as a voting council member because I may not be here next year. That's why I didn't propose any amendments, but I still have a voice now. And if Mr. Courtright should want some of his people to make a little bit more money, and if he thinks that they should be making more than Mayor Doherty's employees do in the equivalent positions, then all he has to do after he takes office is open up the budget, transfer some funds from contingency, and raise salaries. And if he wants to do that, that's his choice. But one thing is, I will not do it for him. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. The final votes on the 2014 operating budget will be cast shortly. Uh, as you know, some of my colleagues had discussed adding a 25% increase to the mayor's proposed 56% tax increase. Despite the facts that the $2 million liquid fuels budgetary hole has shrunk, and a 2014 tax anticipation note had been secured. In addition, the newspaper reported this week that the sewer authority is proceeding with the process of a potential sale or a public-private partnership, which could generate revenue for the city next year. Further, Mayor Doherty spoke with Gerald Cross of the Pennsylvania Economy League again today to ensure that his 2014 proposed budget remained acceptable to Pell. And he was assured that yes, the proposed budget is agreeable. Now, would Pell like more money? Yes. Would it refuse an additional tax increase? Never. However, the proposed budget meets the expenses of city government and fulfills Pell's requirements according to Mr. Cross. Um, so it appears, and I'm very glad that my colleagues are not proposing this among their amendments tonight. It appeared that the mayor-elect and his league of mercenaries from the Doherty administration who wanted to burden the people of Scranton with an extra 25% tax increase in addition to the 56 percent increase proposed by the mayor um, are not going to get their way. Now during last week's meeting I mentioned to Mr. Hickey, former Doherty administration solicitor and now advisor to Mr. Courtright who was looking for money from the, uh, more money from the taxpayers last week, that the mayor is granted the power to open the budget by the Home Rule Charter. The tax formulas have not been set by ordinance for 2014. That legislation will not be drafted and submitted to City Council until January 2014. Consequently, the new mayor can open the budget at that time if his advisors counsel him that there is any financial emergency and propose an additional 25% tax increase or anything else that he's uh, seeking in the tax formula that he will submit to the new council for its approval. In addition, if the mayor-elect wanted more money from the taxpayers, he could have and should have participated in the proposed budget process with Mayor Doherty, as he was invited to do, yet he chose not to do so. And I choose to stand with the people of this city for whom I've worked and fought so hard for the last 10 years. Not only would I never approve an additional 25% tax hike, I wouldn't approve an override vote of the mayor's veto of an additional 25%. So Mr. McGough, you know me well. <laughs> the financial problems of our city have multiple causes too numerous to discuss in one evening. The proposed 2014 operating budget is a reflection or more appropriately a consequence of those problems. If I had to reduce the issues to a bottom line, however, I would say 
that excessive borrowing and wasteful spending through 2008 gave birth to the crisis that occurred in 2012 and beyond. I warned against these actions and voted against each of them. When the crisis occurred, I didn't respond with inaction or the phrase, I told you so. Rather, I rolled up my sleeves and partnered with Mayor Doherty to face the problems head on and solve them through a revised recovery plan and procurement of TANS in order to prevent bankruptcy and to maintain the level of public safety and services for which the people of Scranton pay their taxes. Councilman Joyce, Mayor Doherty, and I worked together on the 2013 budget. And the city government had no crises, surprises, or delinquent bills this year. However, the 2013 budget also charged the administration to pursue a commuter tax, pilots from large nonprofits, $600,000 owed by the icebox, and a sale of the sewer authority, among other revenue generators. And these were to provide for the 214 the 2014 budget and beyond. For whatever his reasons, the mayor chose not to follow through. At the same time, the state government turned its back on Scranton and its people. After leading the mayor to the Supreme Court to fight the state's own war against municipal unions, it left the mayor this city council and all city taxpayers with the bag of bills. The state refused to contribute to payment of the Supreme Court award, while state elected officials said they could not help us with nonprofit pilots, countywide tax reassessments, or a payroll tax, among other requests I made. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's simply this. The mayor didn't do his work, and the state gave us excuses, apologies, but no real financial assistance. That's why the mayor's proposed budget contains tax and fee increases. Now, I worked tirelessly to prevent a 56% tax hike and garbage fee increase from occurring. Others, unfortunately, did not. I know the people of our city. I know that most senior citizens, blue collar working families, the unemployed, the sick, and the poor cannot afford the taxes contained in this budget. The people first elected me in 2003 to fight for them. They reelected me in 2005 and again in 2009, trusting me so greatly as to elect my team of council candidates to represent them always, fight for them when necessary, solve their problems, and protect the little guys. That I have always done, and oftentimes against all odds. And that I will continue to do tonight. Merry Christmas to all of you, my friends. That's it. 5B, authorizing the issuance and sale not to exceed $17 million principal amount, tax anticipation note of the City of Scranton, known as TAN Series 2014-A, awarded to IFS Securities determining the form and term of said note, awarding said note, authorizing and directing the filing of certain documents, and directing the proper officials of the City of Scranton to take any and all other actions as may be required in connection with the issuance of said note. Emergency certificate attached. If they need it, they get it. <laughs> At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 
think I could take this home with me, Mr. McGall? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 5B to 6th and 7th order to be considered for final passage based on the attached emergency <coughs> certificate. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. At this time, if anyone would like to address council on the emergency TAN legislation, you may do so. Mrs. Craig? 6A, formerly 5B, reading by title, file of council number 56, 2013, an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale not to exceed $17 million principal amount tax anticipation note of the City of Scranton, known as TAN Series 2014-A, awarded to IFS Securities, determining the form and term of said note, awarding said note, authorizing and directing the filing of certain documents, and directing the proper officials of the City of Scranton to take any and all other actions as may be required in connection with the issuance of said note. Emergency certificate attached. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of council number 55, 2013 appropriating funds for the expenses of the city government for the period commencing on the first day of January 2014 to and including December 31st, 2014 by the adoption of the general city operating budget for the year 2014. Before Mrs. we Evans. take a final vote on this, I would ask the amendments to be presented. Well, I was just going to make a motion. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to amend. Um, file of council number 55 2013 second on the question all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved um, as said before I, I believe that it will be necessary to make these as individual motions and so for each of the items that was mentioned before I will make a motion for each one and we will vote if, if that's to your approval. I would prefer that too. Uh, unless I think what you were saying before is if something were not approved, you it would, it would make them move. Yeah. Uh, okay. We could. Then that's fine. Will we take the public comment prior to voting on the motions? Yes, I think that would be. A that would be probably. Yeah, proper, I yeah. think that would be proper. Per se. If there is anyone who wishes to address council concerning the budget amendments, please do so now. Good evening again, Council Doug Miller Scranton. Um, obviously, yes, I do Good want evening. to comment on Good the evening. budget amendments. Good evening. You know, I, I don't want to say anymore. I really don't. Um, after coming down here for all these years. Um, I'm just totally uh, baffled by, uh, you know, what I heard earlier this evening, um, that we want to, in fact, call these amendments. Um, I think this is the lowest form that we could possibly do to the residents of this city. What we did here this evening, and what we're attempting to do here this evening, is, is very simple. It's not complex. There's nothing complex about it whatsoever. Nothing was done to protect the residents of this city. All we did was increase salaries and create jobs. Something that Mrs. Evans and her majority have been fighting against for the last four years. Particularly Mrs. Evans fighting against it for the past 10 years as a councilwoman. And I think it's a total insult and lack of regard to the residents of this city. And I'd say that we f you have failed, those that have created these amendments, you failed in your obligation to look out for the residents of this city. 
You did not propose one thing that benefited the taxpayers. We didn't do anything to lower the tax increase. We did absolutely nothing to reduce the garbage fee. We did absolutely nothing to reduce the rental registration fee. We did absolutely nothing to reduce the meter rates. All we did was yet again look out for our political friends. I guess this is what we call back on track. Uh, you know, that's what we heard all summer long, that we were going to go back on track. Well, if this is back on track, the next four years look pretty darn bleak, let me tell you. And I totally lost any faith I had for the next administration. And if this is the sign of what's to come with the next council, we're going back to another rubber stamp council. And I'm losing faith in that. You have an obligation and a responsibility to look out for what's best for the residents. You know, looking at these amendments here, there seems to be all this money where we have the ability to increase salaries and create jobs. Well, if that's the case, why wasn't anything done to decrease the tax increase? Why wasn't anything done to lower the garbage fee? And why wasn't anything done to lower the rental registration and everything else that was proposed in the mayor's budget? Don't you care? You know, I, I, I come up here and I think about the senior citizens. Okay, the elderly, the hard-working, blue-collar people of this town. Okay, the people that struggle to get by day to day. Okay, that's who we need to be looking out for. Not who do we owe a favor to, who can we create a job for, whose salary can we increase. That's what got us into the, this position that we're in today. But evidently, we don't comprehend that. We keep going down the same tired path of politics. And nothing's going to change, obviously. We're just going to continue to go down this road. Because you know what, you, with these amendments, you're showing that you do not care. And if this budget passes tonight, you're sending a message, a signal across this city that you have a complete disregard for the hardworking people of this city. And I just wish they were here this evening to, uh, you know, staunchly oppose what you're trying to do to them tonight because it's not fair. And Mrs. Evans, Mr. Joyce, I ask you to stand by what you've always done, the right thing and vote no to this budget. You too, Mr. Loscom, and vote no to this budget, and vote no to the amendments, and put the people first, because that's what you ran on. Until you leave office January 6th, stick to that. Forget being bullied, forget doing the dirty work for an administration that they're cowards. They don't want to come forward and do the job themselves. They want to use their mouthpieces that they have up here to do it for them, and it's not right. This is about the future of this city, and if you want to continue going down this road, there isn't going to be anything left to save. We talked about being on the, the edge of the cliff. You passed this budget tonight. We basically might as well all jump off because it's over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Ferranis. Mrs. <clears throat> Evans, I'm very proud of you. There's no double standard with you any time ever. And Mr. Joyce, I'm glad everywhere you said. You said it like it was. Mr. Loscom, I, I, I know you're for the people, but when you said one thing, I just couldn't believe it. You said this budget is for the best interest of the people. It's, it's hardly at all. It's not for the best interest at all for the people. It's a knife right in their back. And it's like Mr. Miller said. Well, if anybody knows Victor Newman, they, he calls his son-in-law, or he doesn't like at all, Billy Boy. Well, that's how I refer to Bill Courtright, Billy Boy. So Mr. Rogan and Mr. Goff are carrying Billy Boy's water. I'm sure Billy Boy doesn't want to uh, have to open the budget and do this because then he'll look bad. But he's having you do it, and I can't believe you do it. You're supposed to be for the people, not for Bill. I can't believe that you, but you are doing it because it's typical. Mr. McGough, you took care of Mary Doherty. Now you're going to take care of Bill Courtright. God knows what you're getting in return. I don't know. We'll never know. But I'd love to connect the dots and find out who all these people are in the administration and say, oh, this is Bill's good friend, this is Bill's cousin, this is Bill's sister-in-law's brother. Something's happening here. You're raising salaries in the administration. <laughs> and you care about the people? There should be decreases in almost everything. And I hope, here's my question. If you vote, <clears throat> are you going to vote on each amendment? So if, if you vote no to one thing, that means it's no. And if you vote yes, it means it's yes. Well, it's not going to be a package deal. Oh, no, it's no. not a package. Each, each amendment is going to be separate. Yes. It's not going to be A, B, and C is one. That's what I said. 
that Mr. McGough has already clarified that, yes. That is going to be one, A, B, no, and C? No, that they will be voted on individually. Okay, so here's the thing. So if you vote hypothetically three, four, and two against, does that mean it's the mayor's budget that goes through, or is it, and then the he, has to, he has to veto that? If you have three yes votes, an amendment passes. The motion carries. Okay, so and, if the and then it would be included in the operating budget. Right. That budget, the final budget then, as amended, will be submitted to Mayor Doherty tomorrow, I would assume, yep. for his signature or his veto. I see. Well, I hope he vetoes yeah, I've made, I think we, not to correct you, but uh, the, the second step would that we would have to vote on is we would have to vote on the budget higher. as amended after all after of the, all amendments the amendments were approved yes. or right whatever or, amendments or not were approved. approved you would have to vote on the budget as you voted through all of them at the end yes. of it naturally I just hope the mayor vetoes this budget according to your amendments because another thing mr. Rogan you said you're gonna put a supervisor into the DPW so he could control the overtime wasn't there a supervisor in DPW already isn't that what Mark Dewey does and somebody will probably take his place but isn't that their job DPW refuse specifically doesn't have a supervisor what is Mark Dewey not doing his job what is his position he's what he's a DPW supervisor okay so now you're creating another so isn't somebody gonna take his place he's the director Actually. Well, so if he's yeah, the, director, the director, that's his, if you, aside from the point he's not doing his job, so somebody's going to take his place as director. That's another supervisor that you're going to put in? Minus one collector. Um, no, the, 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 a director plus a supervisor. The, the director will, there's always a director of DPW, there's no change in okay. the director. The supervisor will be supervising. DPW, that funding is coming from the elimination of a collector. I know that, but why would you have a supervisor if you have a director? Why would you need a supervisor? It's like having two bosses. Well, the, in th this one for me is something that I, I've I've seen a lot of problems with in the DPW well, refuse. Well, then thing. maybe you should just get a good supervisor, a good director that will take care of it. Why have two people do the same job? If the director is not doing a good job, then you get someone that is. You well, don't the, create a position to have. Just because the director is not good, make another position. Well, the director is in charge of the entire DPW. Well, highways, the director should parks. take care of the overtime. He shouldn't have to have another supervisor doing the work that he should be doing. You're certainly taking care of somebody. I don't know who that person is yet, but when this, all these names are brought up, we're all going to know who's who and who knows who and why they got this job. And you cut salaries of people you apparently didn't like and raise some person the one you wanted to get in there. What you're doing is a disgrace. And I hope, I hope that Mayor Doherty vetoes this budget. And thank you, Mrs. Evans, and thank you, Mr. Joyce, and Mr. Laskam. I hope you stick with the people like you always have. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening again. My name's Jay Walsh. Uh -huh. Mr. Laskam, let me give you a heads up. The ship's at the bottom. Uh, let me make that particularly clear. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said, the ship is at the bottom. Okay, let me make that perfectly clear. Okay, uh, it's a slow train wreck. Uh, one thing I found with the city, as I found over at the county, is that it's 2013 and the Scranton Inspection Office is handwriting receipts. Why that is, I have no clue, and that's why Danielle Ross was able to be nabbed. Um, and as far as the cable, Get Chromecast, it's $35 a month and you get 5,000 channels. Thank you. First, I'd like to ask Mr. McGough, uh, what are the total um, increases in the budget? I did not add all of the increases together, but the, the dollar amount of the total budget does not change. From what uh, well, I understand you're results. switching money back and forth, but if you, if those require, if the things that you're taking money from 
are not really required, then that, could, that money could have gone to have been taken out of the budget and been used to reduce the principal amount of our debt and start working on our debt service and getting that down, or could have taken some of the tax burden away. Granted, not a lot. I would pref pref yeah, prefer that it would reduce some of the debt. But um, if I could answer I on, on a couple of those points. Um, I only made one. Um, regarding the, the salary increases, um, these funds are being provided from the state. We, we unfortunately can't use those for anything else other than um, other than the, the business administrator's salary, the addition of a position in the business administrator's office. Now, wait a minute. We pay state taxes, too. And it's not coming out of some okay. pot of money that fell out of the sky. No, you're absolutely It's coming correct. from the taxpayers. DCED wouldn't have to send it to us if we didn't have to do this. I'll tell you, this is the difference. And I know most of you have worked in, in government over your life. This is the biggest difference between government and private industry. Only in government does government stand on the brink of bankruptcy and proceed to increase positions and give people salary increases and, and just in generally act as though there's a bottomless pit. When you're in private industry, if you keep raising your, 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 the cost of your doing business, your, it goes into your product. It's got to. And people stop buying and you go out of business. When you're in government, all you do is this, this, this poor schmuck called the taxpayer. And all you do is say, oh, yeah, well, we'll spend whatever we want. And then when we get to the bottom line, if it doesn't balance, we'll do whatever the heck we want and just put it on the backs of the taxpayers. This is... This is very, very disappointing. Now, not all, I understand that the mayor, the new mayor, will have discretion to appoint his uh, administrators, but that does not extend to all of these positions, I wouldn't think, that you uh, people are intent on adding. So would you please tell me which of these will be advertised for vacancies? City Council doesn't hire a fire well, but you, you've, you've been working with the, with the mayor-elect, you said. Well, that's it. You'd have to ask him whether they'd be advertised. Council well, only hires a solicitor. It's to too late. I mean, I can't imagine that a, a refuse collector or a refuse supervisor would not be an advertised position, and I would certainly hope that Mr. Courtright would do that. And when did we get this grant from DCED? I don't remember council voting on it. Um, this is actually the exact same process that the city followed last year. Um, we received a commitment from DCED to fund, I believe last year was two positions in the business administrator's office. Um, the city had to budget the money, and then as the, when the grant comes in, the positions are filled. If the grant was not materialized, um, if DCED when? broke their word, um, then the positions would when was not it a, filled. When did, when did the city apply for this grant? Um, I'm not sure. I wasn't involved in the application process. Um, I'm not sure when the application was put in, but it was the same process that the city went through last year. Well, I, I certainly will be. Uh, what is the name of that grant? I, I don't have a grant name. I could get more information for you on it, um, but it is. It's, well, this isn't anything new. It's the same thing that we did last year. And. I, I don't know I, I have, why making it. If you want, I could read the, the memorandum. The memorandum we received from Pell um, now about the current. Yes, situation I would like a copy of that, office. if you please. Sure. Yes, I would like that, and I would also finally like to repeat my concern about the folks who have a lot of equity in their homes and uh, and stand to lose it. And there is just something the matter with the budget that passes. You made all kinds of amendments and you are willing to accept the fact that you are going to get the same collection rate this year as you got last year with a 56% increase, that's ludicrous. You're not going to get it. A lot of people are going to suffer, and a lot of people are going to suffer needlessly because they're elderly and they have nobody to help them, and they're going to have the 
entire equity, the thing they work for, the American dream, ripped out from and under them, and I can all, all, I can just, if we didn't have a ceiling, I could see the vulture circling. I'm very disappointed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rogan, you just mentioned a letter from Powell or an agreement or something. Yes. Um, I don't think the rest of council received it. Um, I believe I received this at a meeting with Powell that was um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, to sum it up, basically the, the recommendations are, um, based on our analysis, we make the following recommendations to the staffing and structure, structure of the Office of Business Administrator. Establish the salary level of the business administrator at a level that will attract a qualified candidate. Raise the salary level of the finance manager in order to recruit a qualified candidate. Add a staff assistant position to the business administrator's office. Continue the use of college level interns to assist in audit documentation prep. Um, it further goes on to say, um, during 2011 and 2012, the business administrator's office was unable to accomplish the required home rule charter core functions of its financial management. The 2010 audit was not complete until early 2012. The 2011 audit was completed by the end of October 2012. Several areas of responsibility have been performed by other organizations. For example, the Act 47 coordinator has worked closely with the city throughout 2012 and 13 to prepare the city's monthly cash flows, and the city's financial advisor had to prepare for some city documents related to the 2012 borrowings. Meanwhile, the business administrator has had to function as the accounts payable contact and the financial analyst by still overseeing the city's financial role in the Act 47 recovery plan process. The BA's current duties leave little time for proactive management as the BA has been reactive to the significant financial issues that have confronted the city in the last quarter of 2011 and throughout 2012 and 13. As part of deliberations and negotiations that preceded the adoption of the 2012 revised recovery plan, the mayor and city council agreed to restore the senior accountant and financial analyst position to the business administrator's office. Both positions are now full. These are the two that I was referring to that were placed in last year's budget. Um, the finance manager recently announced that she would be leaving the city for a position in the private sector. The vacancy created by this resignation represents the immediate loss of institutional knowledge and expertise in the preparations of the city's annual budget and ongoing financial reporting requirements. The current compensation for the business administrator, financial manager, and the remaining professional staff in the BA's office was reduced significantly by city council in, in the 2011 and 2012 budgets. The BA salary was reduced from 85,000 to the current 53,000 and other salaries received similar deductions. The city will have considerable difficulty attracting qualified candidates for the business administrator and financial management positions at current levels. The BA in particular has extensive responsibilities and as the city's contact person with the financial institutions and capital markets. Attracting a qualified BA candidate is crucial to reestablishing the city's credit worthiness in the financial community. Pell recommends that the city apply for an Act 47 grant to provide temporary funding that will be used to increase the compensation levels for the business administrator and finance manager and to pay for the additional staff um, position. The grant funding would pay for salary increases of the existing portions for two years. Conclusion, the business administrator's time and efforts should be dedicated to the many initiatives on the 2012 revised recovery plan rather than record performing accounting functions. Completion of the RRP tasks with a short timetable is necessary and requires the full attention and leadership of the business administrator. Um, There are only two positions being added. The one in the business administrator's office and the one in the DPW that is really not an addition, it's an addition and a subtraction. Is, is I that guess the letter date? November 27th, 2013. Well, it was, I'm glad you you know, shared that with us because it was, um, 
certainly right in keeping with um, Pell's policies to selectively disseminate information. Um, Mr. Dobson, did you want to speak? First of all, uh, that bell always, this, I did wish to express uh, that I'm going to miss this council. And even when you disagree, I'll still miss you. <laughs> you know, so uh, thank you, Frank, and thank you, Janet. And um, a suggestion on the uh, refuse coordinator. Uh, um, I certainly hope that things turn around because years ago we had people in foreman spots at the DPW and it was my understanding it was only hearsay from somebody I worked with but it, they were supposed to uh, supposed to uh, coordinate recycling and so forth and Basically, I don't know what their job was, counting paper clips or whatever, uh, but certainly we have no coordination. We have no, uh, no uh, discipline as far as the way people toss out their garbage. Uh, I had Mr. La <laughs> Councilman Lasko come up to see somebody several times, and the person still throws the trash out the same way, which is a total mess. You get it straightened out, and two weeks later, it's the same old thing. And with uh, uh, somebody that would supervise something like that, if they would do their job, it would be an asset. Uh, if they don't do their job, then it's a waste of money. And thank you for your service, and uh, have everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you, and Merry thank you, Christmas, Merry Christmas, Christmas to, you to you as well. well. I think we can begin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make, make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 33, Office of the Mayor, increased standard salary from $91,085 to $96,085 and make the same change to total employee compensation. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the budget on page 34, proposed budget on page 34, increase confidential secretary salary from $31,085 to $36,085 and change the department of the mayor total from $91,085 to $96,085. Second. On the question? Yes. Um, I will say that I've been privy to know uh, the person that is going to uh, assume this position. And, and I will say the person that's going into this position is a very hard worker. Do I think they're worth 36085 Yeah, I do. But you know what? There's other confidential secretaries that are going to be in the administration. And I can't support saying the mayor's secretary is worth more than the secretary in the law office who will make $5,000 less. And, you know, I, I probably would just add, I feel very similarly to the finance chair. I, too, know the individual who will assume this position, and she is a wonderful person and uh, very capable, highly qualified. But this council cut that salary. And some of us were more aggressive about you know these cuts to salaries than others and you know i i i don't see what has changed and most of all i don't see 
that this is something that we can do when people's taxes are being increased so much. You know, we're, we're just adding insult to injury. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Mrs. Evans, may oh, the I kind of so Thank you. <laughs> I make a motion to amend proposed budget on page 42, decrease standard salary for the office of city council city clerk from $219,290.96 to $214,290.96. On the same page, decrease the total for the Department of City Council, City Clerk, from $300,942.29 to $295,942.29. Second. On the question? Yes, this is the corresp corresponding, the ne this item and the next one is a corresponding $5,000 <coughs> cut in a salary um, to balance item number one the four parts thank you is there anyone else yes I will say this um, solicitor Hughes uh, earned forty five thousand dollars per year for his work here on council and I will say this he did one hell of a job for that money he is broke his back doing legal work, doing research. He's done more than any other council solicitor, I think, has ever done. More, you know, more, but, than, more than city solicitors do. But I will say this. I know that there are three people returning to city council. And, um, you know, I, I'd be hypocritical if I didn't say what is appropriate for Boyd Hughes wouldn't be appropriate for who they shall choose as well. So I just want to ask each of the returning council members if this salary adjustment is okay with you. Yes. Is and okay with? Yes, with whom you may want as your solicitor in the future. Oh, did, did the because if solicitor agree? Uh, yes, because no. I feel if Mr. Not Hughes, that I know of. if Mr. Hughes earned forty-five thousand, then I think that's what um, the incoming council solicitor should earn as well, unless they feel it should be a little bit less. Well, uh, in addition to that, Mr. Rogan mentioned, um, and quite correctly, that these changes are occurring in order to provide for the uh, increase in the mayor's office. And since I didn't approve of the increase in the mayor's office, I won't be approving of finding the funding <laughs> to provide for that increase. Is there anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Op no. Uh, the ayes have it, and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 43 in the Office of City Council City Clerk, decrease the salary of the legislative legal advisor from 45000 to 40000 and decrease the total on page 43 to $214,290.96. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 39 in the Department of Public Safety, Bureau of Fire, increase the standard salary from $9,240,578.50 to $9,257,000 or $257,806.61 and 
and changed the total employee compensation from $21,605,138.99 to $21,622,367.10. On the same page, change Bureau of Fire total from $21,737,233.99 to $21,754,000 or $754 thousand four hundred and sixty two dollars and ten cents and change the Department of Public Safety total from forty four million one hundred and fifteen thousand six hundred and forty six dollars and twelve cents to forty four million one hundred and thirty two thousand eight hundred and seventy four dollars and twenty three cents second on the question all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? No. No. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend proposed budget on page 40, Department of Public Safety, Bureau of Fire, increase sal the salary of the chief from $50,000 to $67,228.11 and increase the Bureau of Fire total from $9 million Two hundred and forty thousand five hundred and seventy eight dollars and fifty cents to nine million two hundred and fifty seven thousand eight hundred and six dollars and sixty one cents second on the question yes, yes. I, I, I will say that this is one of the amendments that I will support because technically it's not a cut from what the or technically it's not a raise from what the previous fire chief earned I just wanted to add, and I appreciate Mr. Joyce for that comment. That's pretty much what I was going to say. Um, and the fear of many on the fire department and, and the incoming administration is, even with the fire chief's salary at six, at the um, the former level that Chief Davis made, Chief Davis makes less than the men under him, which is fine. And um, you know, the next chief is going to have to work for for the same pay that our current chief made but by reducing that further where it would come to you know where the point where a senior man in the fire department would be taking a twenty thirty thousand dollar pay cut it would make it almost impossible for anyone on the F Scranton fire department to accept that position and at that point it may be somebody from outside of Scranton that would be needed that didn't know the procedures and I know Mr. Loskin wanted to speak on it. He knows this a lot better than I do. I think you guys have covered it pretty well. Thank you. Well, you know, I agree with what you're saying. But my one question is this. Why didn't Mr. Courtright work on the budget and make these changes, this change in particular? Does anyone know? I would say that in, in speaking with um, Mr. Courtright and also speaking with people in the administration that there there had been some attempts by Mr. Courtright and by members of the finance team to to be involved I don't know the level of cooperation that existed well, that was in that after, process. The, after the proposed budget was submitted. I, and and, I and even subsequent to. subsequent to that, or before and subsequent to the proposal, um, I'm not sure, you know, what what the level of cooperation was. And, well, or, I, um, I've heard that afterwards both sides were trying, but beforehand, no. I, I would just like to add, I believe the election was November 5th, and the budget was sent down, was it November 10th? No, the 15th. 15th. The 15th. Yeah. So there was a 10-day period in between. That's not a lot of time to work on. I would hope the budget, the administration had a pretty good idea what they were planning on doing previous to 10 days out. Um, but, but that being said... Um, I, I know last year Mayor Doherty wanted to increase the fire chief's salary. Um, why one year he wants to put in, I believe it was a $20,000 increase, and council rightly took it out. And then the next year, 
he wants a $17,000 decrease. Um, I believe last year that funding should remain the, remain the same for this position, and I believe this year that funding should remain the same for this position. I do as well, but I think it was the responsibility of the mayor-elect to take a look at these things and do some work, and his financial team as well. They certainly have become busy thereafter. But I will approve this because I believe that it should be increased. And I don't mean beyond what it was, but to the salary that it had previously been. But I believe it, none of this was really council's job to be doing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 82, Department of Public Works, Bureau of Refuse, decrease overtime salary from $100,000 to $82,771.89. Second. On the question. This is the corresponding cut um, in regards to restoring the fire chief's salary to its previous level. Um, Just out of curiosity, why is it the Bureau of Refuse? I, I know, and believe me, I know <laughs> Councilman Rogan that <laughs> they're not you're very favorite. critical of DPW overtime, if no, anyone I, is. I, I am Can very... I answer it? Maybe it, it well, would be not as well, biased. <laughs> well, I, 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 think, I think I have a, a very good answer for it, okay. and it's okay. that they were, we're adding a DPW Refuse supervisor um, with the hope that that will cut down on DPW Refuse overtime. Okay. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 83 in the Department of Public Works, Bureau of Refuse, reduce the number of collectors from 27 to 26 and the collector's salaries from $1,106,065.06 to $1,076,065.06. And add, my apologies, <laughs> and add a DPW refuse supervisor for a salary of $30,000. Second. On the question. Yes, I, I just had one question about this. Now, Interesting enough, uh, I, I'm, I'm not an expert about refuse collection or recycling. To men or, or women uh, who collect the garbage and you know when they drive by my house to get the garbage you know one goes on one side of the street another one goes on the other side of the street now if we go to tw now if you divide 27 by 3 it would make sense that there's nine garbage trucks or, or refuse uh, trucks yes. driving around the city would this create an uneven Balance. I mean, would there be a short-staffed refuse truck with just a driver and one collector, you know, running from one side of the street to the other side of the street? That's it, it would. That's have, the only question I had. It wouldn't be any different than if, if somebody called off sick that's or somebody was, was on. I was going to say basically um, that's what happens now. Yes, it, they're, yeah, they're fill in guys. There's a couple fill-ins. Believe yeah. me, I'm not an expert on DPW operations, so I, I was just asking if someone happens to know what exactly happens uh you know if, if we have one less guy on one truck how would they replace him is there uh would it come out of uh, other salary in the dpw account would well, I, a temporary person be used or i, I know exactly the, is that <laughs> i know that the current complement in the budget that passed last year was um 25 which is also not divisible by three right <laughs> so That's it. Costs and positions are growing everywhere. Um, anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. 
Oh, the ayes have it and so moved. I'm very sorry. I'd like to make a motion to amend proposed budget on page 62 in the Office of Economic and Community Development, eliminate the position of support service specialist part-time, and decrease the funding of that position from $23,824 to $0, and decrease the Bureau of Administration total from $457,507.44 to $430,683.44. Second. And the question. Yes, uh, just, just a quick question. I'm sorry uh, for being so inquisitive. But um, is this position, is this someone that's retiring or is this uh, I, I believe position that uh, Ms. Abley suggested that is no longer needed. Or I believe this position is currently filled, but there are two full-time positions in OECD that are unfilled. Um, okay. So the hope would be to have fill the full-time positions, eliminate the part-time position. Okay. Then I could support that. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 62 in the Office of Economic and Community Development, increase the funding for neighborhood police officers from $184,417.58 to $207,241.58. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Hit the page. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 50 in the Department of Business Administration Bureau of Administration. Increase the salary of the business administrator from $53,550 to $85,000. Second. On the question? On the question, the next <clears throat> five amendments will all be paid for by grants from DCED. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have been so moved. I'd like to make a motion to Amend the proposed budget, also in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, increase the salary of the finance manager from $37,400 to $50,000. Second. On the question. You know, I was just thinking it's a good thing the mayor's salary was increased to $60,000 for next year, or you wouldn't be able to vote for any of these. <laughs> Since, you know, Mr. Rogan had said no one should earn more than the mayor. So it's a very good thing we increased the mayor's salary. Um, anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget. In the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, add the position staff assistant at a salary of $35,000. Second. On the question? This position I will support. Um, the Business Administrator's Office, uh, I'll be honest with you, we have made cuts there in the past, and I know they are. Uh, short very, staff. very late on audits and short staffed and and I do believe that uh, there will be a lot of work that needs to be done in that office and um, hopefully um, our future mayor will find the right person to fill that position anyone else all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 49 in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, 
increased standard salary from $238,904.21 to $317,954.21. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 49 in the Department of Business Administration, Bureau of Administration, change the total for business administration from $8,163,921.62 to $8,242,971.62. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 31, decrease unpaid bills court awards from $29,098,756.45 to $29,019,706.45. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. Excuse me. I'd like to make a motion to amend the proposed budget on page 24 under rents and concessions, insert an account for cell phone tower leases for $18,000. The total for rents and concessions shall remain at $25,000. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. What is the recommendation of the chair for the committee on finance? As chairperson for the committee on finance, I do not recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll just say the same thing. I, I think I've made my point clear before. I do not support a budget with a 55% tax or 56% tax increase, 69% garbage fee increase, 25 cent raise in your meter rates, and a jack uh, or a large spike in rental registration fees that also includes raises I just want to add this is what is called the lazy man's budget um, it I'm sure is a great delight to the Pennsylvania Economy League who believes that tax increases are the one and only solution to the financial ills of every municipality um, I think it's far easier to just say I'll increase your taxes heck the way you're going why not increase them 200 percent boy the city won't have a problem in the world then would it but the point is if you don't want to take that route you have to find other roads and you've got to work hard you got to make those things happen with these new revenue generators but nobody's got the um inclination to do so evidently not the previous administration not the new administration so as I said uh, I, I agree with mr. Joyce I will be saying no to the lazy man's budget if I, if I may just add and again this has been anguishing um, and you could see I uh, as I mentioned before it could be called a lazy man's budget. Last year we proposed a budget that had all these revenues. Had they been watched and done, we wouldn't be in this position. The problem is now the banks aren't going to take those ideas and run with them. I'm sorry. I'm going to be here for the next two years. And, and uh, you know, believe it or not, I, I, I doubt I'd ever be voted in again. But hopefully, in two years, the people are going to see the turnaround and say, you know, you had to do what you had to do. The easy way for me to do it is to vote no, and then where are we going to go? Bankruptcy? 
I don't know. Would you prefer that? 130% increase in taxes and no say? We were, you know what though, Jack? We were just about at that tonight. If you take 56 and then you add 25 and then as Mr. Lockwood would tell us, that 25 increases so it would have been more like 32. And then you add the, what was it, 69% increase for the garbage fee, you're there. Could I, uh, I well, th I'm sorry, were you finished, Mr. Lawson? No, no, I, I'm, but you could go on. I, I may <laughs> want to add something. Um, I would just like, uh, I know Mr. Lascom uh, mentioned during motions, uh, um, started to go through some of the numbers. Um, if, if this were to pass, the average taxpayer would see an increase, this would be including the tax and the garbage fee increase, would see an increase of three, about $390. That's a little over a dollar a day, okay? The total tax bill increase that they would realize would be somewhere around 20% of their total bill. So that somebody that was paying $1,000 in 2013 uh, in total taxes, that's city, county, school district would now be instead of paying a thousand would now be paying a thousand two hundred dollars okay uh, and it would still leave us as the lowest taxing body in the uh, of all three taxing bodies um, I believe and the other thing that I think should be mentioned if we vote no to the to these amendments and to the budget this evening with the, with the proposals, that would automatically revert to, we would then automatically revert to the mayor's proposed budget, which would be the same dollar amount. It would not change anything. The tax increase would be the same, the garbage fee increase would be the same, rental registration would be the same, all of those things would be the same. So by voting, by voting to <coughs> not approve the amended budget really doesn't accomplish, I don't think accomplishes anything. And while it may be seen as a lazy man's budget, uh, I think it's a lazy person's vote to vote against it because all we do is revert to the same thing that we had before us before. And now made, let me ask so. this for okay. a second. If you're saying no is a lazy man's vote, I wanted to ask you, why did you vote no last year on the budget? Mr. Joyce, I'm not going to argue over how I voted. I, I, I'm not saying it. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm just I'm saying just, it like it is. I guess I'm just being, uh, somebody used, called, you know, said a lazy man's budget. I just turned it around and, you know, if I'm going to be called lazy, maybe I'm just okay. being, I'm, but being I'm just reactive. Say, I'm just saying, no, actually. I, I just want you to take into consideration I wasn't the person that said that that was a lazy man's no, I, budget. No, I'll okay. take credit. I apologize. For that, that's okay. I'll I, take credit for the statement. And when I made the statement, I was referring to the current administration and the new administration. However, and I had not thought it applied to council members. However, on further, um, on further reflection, thank you. I guess it does because, as has been pointed out so well, none of the amendments are anything that help this situation or help the people of this city. Not a crumb. Not by a dollar. Even. Why did you support some Nothing. of them then? Why did I support some of them? Because um, some of them, you believe some of them were worthy. I believe that the uh, fire chief's salary needs to be restored, but I said I also believe Mr. Courtright should have done that. I'm supporting uh, something in um, the BA's office because I have believed that they have been understaffed. 
Do I think they all need to make more money? No, I don't. Do I think they need more people? Yes, I do. And as you said, that money is coming through a grant. So it does do a little bit to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gave, it gave somebody a job. But did it help? Did it help the people of the city? No. Well, I, I mean, when you, look at, when you look at these amendments and you compare them to the amendments made over the last three years, there's no, there's no comparison, none. Well, I would, I would just like to comment a little bit on some of what was mentioned by other council members, some of what Mr. McGough said, and I want to elaborate on one point where, as Mr. McGough said, if this budget were voted down, whether it be 3-2 or 0-5, to five, however it was voted down, the mayor's budget would revert into law. Um, as far as the total dollar amount in the budget and the increases in light items, they are all identical. The only differences are, and many of these differences to some people may seem small, um, but I, I believe some of them to be certainly worthwhile. Attracting a competent fire chief from within the city of Scranton is certainly something that is worthwhile. Um, I have talked to many men on the fire department that believe their supervisor should be somebody that came from the ranks, not somebody from outside. Regarding the business administrator's office, and as we stated before, these positions are coming as a, from a grant from the state. And it was just two years ago that our current business administrator lost over a million dollars of taxpayer funds. And I will be the first to say, if this happens under our next mayor and our next administration, I'll be the first one here calling on that person to be fired, just as I did with Ryan McGowan. Um, a couple of the other items in here um, regarding the changes in the public works. Um, I, I've been, this is something I've probably said at every single council meeting for the last two years that I have problems with how our refuse division is currently run. I believe putting a supervisor in there can save the taxpayers money on overtime without costing additional money because we're eliminating another position. Um, by having one less po union position in the DPW union and one more supervisor, we can get more out of our workers. And that's something I believe that we have to do in every single department in the city. As far as the tax increases go, it, it, it's not a pleasurable thing to do to vote for. I work three jobs to pay my bills. I know many of you out here do. Many of you can't because you're on a fixed income. I completely understand that. And I think we all do. And I think the common thread between the three of us that are voting to pass the amended budget tonight, and I may be wrong, but I believe this is the first time the th Mr. Waskum, Mr. McGough, and myself voted as a block to pass a piece of legislation, is that we are going to remain in the city's government going into next year. And it's important that the financial, although the local banks and the larger banks are willing to do business with the city of Scranton, that they're willing to provide a TAN, which luckily we passed tonight, and that's thanks to the good work of Boyd Hughes. Even more important, and this is, as I've said, and many of us have said, the biggest monkey on the city's back is finding a lending institution that will lend us money to pay the arbitration awards. We are currently spending nearly $3,000 a day in interest on that award. Every day that goes by, the city is paying more in interest than most of us up here make in over a month. This bill has to be paid, or this interest is going to continue to, to grow. Um, the budget needs to be seen to sound by the financial community. Um, we need a business administrator's office that is going to be able to get these items done. Do I like the entire package of this budget? Of course I don't. I don't think there's one single person in the city that does. Um, but as Mr. Loscom said, Mayor Doherty has not pursued many of the other items that I know Mrs. Evans and myself agreed on, which are sale of the sewer authority. Um, hasn't happened. Something that, that really could bail out the city. Um, other revenue ideas. I know Mr. Loscom and I talked about this today. Street smart. 
Um, another item that didn't happen, the pursuit, pursuing of a commuter tax prior to a budget being proposed. But the administration didn't pursue any of these items. So the choice is either to vote yes or vote no. Whether, you, whether council approves this budget tonight or shoots it down tonight, the tax increase will be the same, the garbage fee increase will be the same, the rental registration increase will be the same, the meter increase will be the same, and the total dollar amount of the budget will be the same. Um, that being said, I would rather get a few items that I believe can help the city, and the vast majority of them being paid for by the state, which are still your tax dollars, but we should be using our state, bringing our state tax dollars home to Scranton to help where we can. So our business administrator's office doesn't lose a million dollars again in two years. Um, that is why I will vote for this, and that is all I have. Uh, I, I just wanted to say something, finally. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's the same way either way, as has been said. But it's the same way either way, because clearly, you know, there haven't been amendments made to make any remarkable changes. But beyond that, it was as important, even more important, in 2012, when the city was really on the verge of bankruptcy, when the city had, was down to $5,000, and people were being paid minimum wages, and the only way to maintain safety and services and to attract any bank that would assist the city was to pass a recovery plan. And you voted against that. Because those revenues didn't mater wouldn't materialize and they haven't. And then, you know, we went forward, we had to get a TAN, we had to do borrowing to take care of that year's bills, we produced a budget. You voted no to all of that, but you didn't have any alternatives to offer. Just that, I don't like that. So here we are now, and I guess what I'm asking you is, what's changed about you? Well, I could ask the same thing back. No, nothing's changed with me. In effect, well, I last had... year you criticized me for voting against it and not proposing a package of amendments. This year you're voting against it and not proposing a package of amendments. The shoe's just on the other foot. No, yes, not at all. Because it absolutely is. I had offered solutions. They not did this not... year. They did not come to pass. I had done it in this budget and all year long, unlike you. So, you know, I, I think there's got to be ownership. At least I hope there will be, you know, with uh, going, into, going into the future. But um, I guess I'll just end it. We can vote. And I'll say, uh, God help the people. Uh, might I just remind council members that? I, yeah, yeah. now no, it's been a while, so you a said yes vote is a no, that you're agreeing with me and you're a, voting a no, no vote. To the a no vote would be to approve the amended budget. A yes vote would be to defeat the amended budget. Correct. And I see, I see our newspaper reporter looking at, He's at me like we have five Just heads, reverse. Just reverse. We'll the, explain it after the The meeting. traditional process. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? No. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare that the that item 7A as amended passes is approved is approved seven B the consideration by the committee on rules for adoption resolution number 48 2013 Amending resolution number 43, 2013, entitled Ratifying and Approving of the Execution and Submission of the Grant Application by the City of Scranton on behalf of the Scranton Sewer Authority to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania 
acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant pursuant to the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act in the amount of $415,695 for the project to be known as Street Sweeper Project located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. This resolution shall also authorize the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept the grant if approved and execute and enter into a local share account grant contract and commitment letter with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for such project by correcting the typographical error in the project name in the first whereas clause to Street Sweeper Project and reducing the grant amount to $410,211. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. I would like to make a motion to take resolution number 47, 2013 from the table. Second. On the question, we had tabled this uh, piece of legislation during last week's meeting because council had not reached out to uh, Mr. D'Antona to request a uh, resume. Since then, council's office did contact him and he did provide a wonderful letter and resume. Yes, and I would also like to thank him for doing so and I wish him very well. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules, for adoption, resolution number 47, 2013, previously tabled. Appointment of Paul D'Antona, 333 North Sumner Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority to fill the unexpired term of Thomas Smith, whose term is scheduled to expire June 17, 2016. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough. Yes. Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, formerly 6A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 56, 2013, authorizing the issuance and sale not to exceed $17 million principal amount tax anticipation note of the City of Scranton, known as TAN Series 2014-A, awarded to IFS Securities, determining the form and term of said note, awarding said note, authorizing and directing the filing of certain documents, and directing the proper officials of the City of Scranton to take any and all other actions as may be required in connection with the issuance of said note. Emergency certificate attached. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I do recommend final passage <laughs> of item 7D. Second. On the question, again, I think it's very important to acknowledge and thank uh, the great efforts of Mr. Michael Judge and Council Solicitor Hughes. Uh, we never gave up on the uh, attainment of a TAN, uh, when others thought it was not going to happen, when Mr. Hickey um, of the League of Mercenaries came in last week Mercenaries. to say that it would not happen and it's something else that needed to be covered, we never gave up. And I, I thank those gentlemen immensely. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. On behalf of City Council, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy and blessed Christmas and a healthy, happy New Year.
This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Broncos probably put up about three touchdowns well, already. <laughs> I brought it. Dinner? Yeah. I tell her yeah, to wait for me outside. I have to. Well, if. You